Okay, now we can whisper. <laughs> okay, uh, this is the time for the public to come forward with any comments on any subject related to city business that is not listed on our uh, public hearings or under our agenda tonight. Um, I have three speaker cards, and uh, also when you come up, um, please state your name and address. You have three minutes, and also some of the questions that get asked, um, any questions that are asked, usually within 30 days. But all the questions are put on our uh, FAQ uh, page on the residence section of uh, the website. And you can look up the, um, the agendas and find and look at the different questions that are asked to get your answers at that point. Um, first uh, card I have is from Mike Masterson. Mr. Masterson.
coverage area and his calm manner had to be reassuring and calming to residents and future visitors. Second, and this was covered in the press event, the chief demonstrated that he had developed a broad plan when he learned of the event. It included approaching the courts, developing a traffic plan, a crowd control plan, and backup plans. Folks that didn't follow the traffic plan were dealt with. Traffic generally flowed smoothly and people were not able to re-enter a wise decision. And the number of attendees was identified to be exceed, you know, greater than what they had planned for. Mutual aid was obtained from the county, Eustace and others. A wise decision and a wise use of his available resources in knowing what to do. I've heard some people say we have a safety problem and need more police. This is the first situation in my 10 years in Mount Dora of this nature. Just as the utility companies employ mutual aid during hurricanes, we should continue to partner with our neighbors and continue to execute quick planning and avoid the unnecessary expense of resources. Sitting idle during calm times, the normally calm times of Mount Dora, and if we need additional help, do like we did this time. Reach out to the Eustace, reach out to DeVarius, reach out to the county, and execute a good plan. And I think the chief deserves a round of applause for his work. Beth Hughes. Page name and address, please. Hello, my name is Beth Hughes. I live at 2151 Washington Road in Sylvan Shores in Mount Dora. And I, like everyone else in my community, have a lot of concerns about what happened during the rave and the shootings in our neighborhood. The um, body was found a block and a half from my home and actually just across the street from where I once lived. Um, we have experienced an escalation in crime in that area in recent months, um, starting with the youths from Apopka who came up and were breaking into cars and homes, and uh, the, the one neighbor on Northland Avenue who went after them with a baseball <coughs> bat and grabbed a baseball bat and began beating him. It seems that we have an infiltration from other areas, and with this party that was planned, this event that was planned. I think the concerns of me and most of my neighbors is of not ever letting this happen again. And who is being held accountable for the additional law enforcement that had to be brought in, that, that's going to cost the city of Mount Doris some money. Um, I know Lake County responded, uh, other neighboring cities like Eustace, Tiberias, and Claremont, as well as um, the um, DOT, so that, that, that costs money. Who is gonna pay for that? And how can we ensure that this is never gonna happen again? That's it. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And um, Dr. Kernan. Name, address, three minutes. Floyd Kernan, 1015 North Alexander Street, Mount Dora. Uh, I appreciate, first of all, the city manager's reply to the Thrill Hill situation, and you did a great job answering a lot of questions there. The only thing is that normally a permitting for reopening a, a sand mine, clay mine like that should be pretty simple, straightforward, and expeditious. I don't know what the problem is, but they're needing a lot of fill on the expressway extension, and we ought to follow up closely on that. Second off, has a letter been sent to the property owner adjacent to Grantham Park as far as purchasing that undeveloped property and converting it into a park and parking area? We've addressed the parking and the lots during the budget meeting. Um, a lot of conversation has taken place with some of the owners, um, but we have a broker who's doing some of that. I've also reached out to several of them, so you'll see that through the budget process. Okay, great. Okay. That's what I wanted to hear. All right. <laughs> How about a final tree report? Now, the last entry in the city council minutes is dated the 22nd of the 27th of April. I understand that the scope of the survey has been expanded and everything, 
but it's time to get it out and get it public. Sorry. Um, again, it's, it has been presented. It's being reviewed with the consultant at this point in time. We may be able to get on the August 15th. If not, it'll be the first meeting in September. But we do have it coming to you in the very near future. Great. Uh, lastly, I realize the administrative offices and the city council and everything are really doing a heck of a job there. However, the last written city council minutes are dated the 20th of June on the website. Is there any way we could more expeditiously provide them to the public? They're, they're moved out there as soon as they're approved, but there's always a set in the agenda for each meeting of the previous meeting. Till they're approved, they're not pushed out there. Oh, okay. So if you'll look at the agenda, you'll see what was at the last meeting. Once it's approved, then we move it out accordingly. Okay. Go ahead, All City right. Clerk. Good enough. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, we have another one. Um, Richard Barnett. Barnett, yeah. I, uh, if I butchered that, I'm sorry. Barnett, yeah. Yeah, it's hard to say. Okay. Uh, Just read three, three minutes again. State your name and address, please. Okay. Richard Barnett, and living in 2270 Washington Road, Mandora. And um, we have a situation I've been hiding to do a commission of work in um, Old 441 and McDonald Street, a white wall there, and it's been looking very bad for a while. And I was have a mind to do something with it. So I've been hiring by the owner to do a nice uh, artwork there, and we do representations of Van Gogh Starry Night. Somehow we have a violation code under graffiti, and that is not the case at all. It can be graffiti when it's commissioner work and I get paid for. It's not illegal, and it's not graffiti at all. It's our work. And violation say to advertising, we remove the sign immediately. It was up for a few hours. So there's no sign at all there. And uh, we want to continue with the work because we spend a lot of hours, a lot of effort. We fix all the wall. We do a nice art work. A lot of people come in, I love it. And Mondora is an artistic town, that's what we want. So represent uh, Mondora, we have a lot of art festivals, everybody knows that. And it's really bad advertising that uh, we cannot do a mural like this. I've been seeing very bad murals at all. I don't know I won't name nobody. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, downtown everywhere, so why not Van Gogh? It's, uh, it's perfect for Mondora. I don't understand. We don't understand. But my, the owner of the property wants to keep up. She is uh, willing to fight back, and we ask cooperation of you guys to keep it up. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Is there anybody else who wish to address council on any item not on the agenda? Come forward, state your name and address. Hemingway, 177 East Fifth Avenue. Hello, everybody. It's been a while. Um, just two things tonight. Uh, I was away during. Please speak up just a little. Speak up just a little. Uh, I was way way out out of town during both of them. One is I know you uh, approved and installed the DAS sound system with the Yamaha board. I keep getting people thanking me for the system. I did not recommend that system. I just want it clear. I did discuss it with Robin Hayes brought in no less than five other people and probably 10 other people from Universal to say don't buy that system, especially not the CL5 board. So I just want it clear I did not recommend it and was in the process of trying to obtain a Myers system for us when I got the call in California. So I'm used to say I'm a bit disappointed in that because it is, it's a second tier system and it always will be. Secondly, I wasn't here for the, the wall issue, and I don't, I haven't been caught up on it. I did catch up on some of it, and I think it still needs to be addressed quite a few more times. There are plenty of sections in our own city codes that say that the, a permit is required in construction uh, for any sidewalk or footpath in a public sidewalk of the city without a permit from the city building inspector. Uh, that's section 74 110 and I believe it's 
under code 19697029. I know there were no permits on that. I don't think there's the issue with the wall as much as it is the procedure in which it was done. If we decide to have an event, we have a meeting that goes to council and find out about it. We want to put a Christmas tree in a, in a walkway and promenade. It gets discussed. Pretty much everything we do and gets to, gets in town gets discussed. This one seemed to be a blind side. It seemed to come out of nowhere, and there are plenty of people that are extremely upset about it. And uh, as far as I can see, looking at a lot of different things, whether you want to call it an ADA, that if that's the case, Ms. Hoge brought up, we have plenty of streets in here, and I've heard as far as people say, oh yeah, well, we can't rent buildings here because the sidewalks are a mess. Well, if that's the case, fix all the sidewalks and the buildings should be filled. But that's not the case. The ADA compliance is not the issue there. Otherwise, there would have been a comprehensive plan from the beginning, which nobody seems to know about. And secondly, where's the order of priority on that? The wall was finished before the sidewalk. So I know there's plenty of people still upset with it, and so I don't know where this is going to go, but I've been out of town. I wanted to voice my opinion, and I'll probably see Robin sometime this week on it. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, Josh, by the way, thank you for all your help that you did do with our sound system and the consultation right. that you do. Thank you very much. Okay, anybody else wish to address the council? Come on up, state your name and address, please. I live at 150 South Clayton Street. I wasn't actually going to talk about um, the, the mural that was painted, but since the artist came up, I really need to feel I, I need to say something. Um, <coughs> it's so subjective. Art is so subjective, as you all know. There is a fantastic graffiti artist in New York City, Banksy, which I'm sure you've all heard about whose graffiti sells for thousands and thousands of dollars. People actually want to buy the doors that this gentleman, this gentleman puts graffiti on, okay? Now, whether you like the artist's work or not, okay, I think that we have to be really careful. I think you're starting to think about a, a slippery slope here. Um, I, I, all of a sudden, you know, things are getting passed as the gentleman before me on a wall that a lot of us didn't want, didn't feel that was right. All of a sudden, signs are being taken out of, of um, shops that you can't advertise if, you know, if somebody's having a, the Ice House Theater uh, is having a production or things like that. You know, people want to come here, and if all of a sudden on the news, you know, it's bad enough. And, and again, I will say that Chief O'Grady and his people really handle this situation, I think, very, you know, very well. I'm sure that this woman over here who discussed somebody being dead a block and a half away from her is terrified. And those are the things that we should, in my estimation, should be working on. And I believe that we are. But let's not, you know, we're not the Gestapo here. I mean, we, what is the matter with it? Why does a painting like that, whether you like it or not, okay, it's still somebody's work. And if you don't like it, you know, don't find another way of, of having him maybe do something else, or I don't know. But I just think that we really have to be careful. You don't want, I know the news is here tonight, and uh, I know that on Facebook, there were a lot of posts. I know that on Facebook there was also the news posting. Do we really want to have that kind of um, advertisement for the city? So I, I don't know. I don't have an answer, but I just feel that I, I needed to say something based on, on what the artist said tonight. And I know he's passionate about his work. So that's all I have to say. Thank you. Thank, <laughs> Thank you. Very much. Appreciate that. Anybody else wish to address the council? Okay, seeing none. I uh, just want to, before uh, we go on to something else, um, the there is going to be the issue of the uh, the wall, the mural on the wall, and everything will be uh, coming up in some uh, future talks and uh, with the council and uh, different venues. I uh, just want to caution the council that. An issue like this, uh, this is going through the different uh, things that's going to be going through a magistrate, different things more than likely, uh, that we are in a quasi-judicial type mode, and not to watch a bunch of public comments on this issue, 
And Ms. Cockrock, if you would just address that real quick, right. appreciate it. Thank you, thank you, Mayor. Um, at this point, um, this matter is a code enforcement matter. It's not before you as a city policy matter, so it would not be appropriate to comment on the matter at this time. Permanently, in my advice to you. <laughs> Fine, thank you, thank you very much. And um, at this time, I'd like to have uh, Ms. Hayes. Uh, she has something she needs to would like to say also at this point. Uh, thank you, Mayor, Council members. Um, Keep in mind that we did discuss um, a few weeks ago about August 31st as being the date we would start addressing ordinance and those type of issues. Um, this can fall under that category, which we would deal with. Um, again, these are there are different codes in different areas, and the city attorney would have to be the one that would address those issues. Um, and I would look to them to go ahead and make those adjustments. As a matter of um, point, we are going to be bringing forth some sign revisions sign code revisions and this may be something that gets discussed as part of that um, as a potential you know policy matter at that point um, and I would also say that there are um, you know there are things that as a, a council I can bring to you um, through the city attorney um, possible resolutions to put certain things in moratorium status to do certain things within the limitations of our current code that that would uh, permit us to um, either put things in, in hold status or place them on a, a table status, but we would have to go through legal. Some things require readings, additional readings, and so forth. Um, so if that is the direction of council, I can work with, with legal. We can work to bring something to you. The earliest meeting we could bring anything for even discussion would be the August 15th. Um, and then after that, it would have to be the September meetings. And then according to what we bring, um, I would assume legal, some of the things would require first reading or, or other changes according to what's presented. These will be code changes. These will be code changes. Okay, right. If there's no objection, I'd like to have the city uh, manager proceed with their direction. I agree with that. In fact, uh, that was uh, always the plan, which we adopted a That's time correct. or two ago. Thank you. Okay, if there's no objection, you have, uh, you have your direction. Thank, Thank you. Thank you very much. <laughs> Okay, uh, we have some presentations tonight, and uh, the first one is the uh, annual Friends of the Environment Award. Andre, or who's going to come up? Mr. Vaughn. Good evening, everybody. I'd like to thank the mayor, the council people, the staff, everybody that works for the city, uh, giving us time to present our annual awards for the environmental stewardship. I'm Mark Vaughn. I live at 1218 Overlook Drive. I am serving as the Vice President of the Mount Dora Friends of the Environment. For more than 20 years, the Mount Dora Friends of the Environment have presented two annual awards, and this new year, a newly award category is being introduced. Each award recipient is recognized for their significant contribution to the area's environment. A live oak tree will be planted in their honor at the approved location of their choice. Their name and to the city's tree plaque, and we will also, a gravestone will be installed at the base of the recipient's tree and all will receive an award certificate printing on recycled paper. <laughs> Our first, we'd like to acknowledge the recipients of the annual government in the, uh, in the environment, a very special crew serving with our city park and recs department. These special folks are the ones who indeed work every day, rain and shine, in between every day to make our city someplace special. And we want to thank each of them for their hard work. James Abney, Brittany Aperson-Sanko, oh, sorry about that, I'm not doing great with names either. Doug Asilio, Albert Vasconi, Ross Bushman, Tim Dando, Nigel Glover, Anthony Harley Jr., Jeff Harris, Michael Hart, Greg Hernandez, Anthony Hines, Ken Holzer, Daryl Highton, Joanne Newsom, Sonia Osborne, Pladex Para, Kathy Powell, Patrick Scanlon, Cedric Scott, Willie Smith, Reggie Thompson, and Steve Wilbanks. A luncheon was recently held in their honor in May, and all these staff persons were thanked for their dedication to the service of the city. Never have so few accomplished so much with such few resources. You all have a heartfelt gratitude for each doing such an awesome job. Second, we'd like to wish to acknowledge the recipient of the, of the award for Citizens of the Environment this year. This award goes to the citizens that show their commitment to the city's environment for, through leading an environmental advocacy, education, and who by putting their feet in the street and hands in the ground have also helped our city further its reputation as someplace special. Miss Mary Miller is receiving the 2017 Friends of the Environment Award. Mary, are you out there somewhere?
Mary was born in Washington, D.C., moved to Miami, Florida, where she raised three children in the 60s. After Hurricane Andrew destroyed her large five-acre nursery of bonsai trees, she was determined that she would be moving. Within a few years, she relocated to Mount Dora in 2010, following her first day visit and tour of our city, moved here into our lovely and unique community. She has been selected for our Friends of the Environment Award and, and as a result of her work helping the plan develop and fund the Volunteer Serenity Park, now under construction and located on the northwest corner of Tremaine Street 9th. A live oak tree will be donated to Serenity Park in honor of Mary's hard work to bring this park from an idea to reality, transforming the former site of a city water tower to a lovely park for residents to other enjoy on our Tremaine Street trail and surrounding neighborhoods. Thank you, Mary, for your creativity and energetic commitment to our environment through all the hard work you've accomplished in just the last year and a half. You've worked a miracle in a short time and now Serenity Park, which is a sub-trust of, of the Mount Dora Community Trust, is becoming reality. Soon the park will be finished and dedicated. Thank you, Mary. Year, the Mount Dora Friends of the Environment are, is inducing a third award, the Award for Business and Environment. The award importance to all business play in maintaining a future, promoting environmental stability, climate literacy, local, regional economic benefits based on environmental values. In particular, we'd like to also honor the business and business persons for their effort in promoting the economic assets that are based on our Sunshine State's famous and fragile environment, which is indeed unique worldwide. The first ever award for business and environment goes to Mr. Ken LaRoe. Ken, will you come forward? <laughs> Over his life, this, this is, I got a little bit to read here. Ken's got quite a life here. Over his life, Ken has accomplished many environmental achievements, all of which have benefited Mount Dora, our region, and our state. As a graduate of both Florida State University and a bachelor's degree at the University of Florida, where he received his Juris Doctorate. Ken has worked hard to promote stability for our environment throughout some of the following accomplishments. Served on Lake County's Public Land Acquisition Committee, made possible through voter-mandated increase half a cent of our local tax. The funds raised contributed toward the acquisition of important and endangered lands that are now protected and that can be enjoyed by all residents and visitors to our area and state. 2009, Ken founded this and CEO of the first Green Bank after founding and serving as a CEO of Florida Choice Bank for more than 10 years. The First Green Bank is one of the first banks in the United States based on environmental values and mission. The Mount Dora location was the first of six branches to be built, and today, First State Green Bank is a statewide bank with more locations being planned. All First Green Bank buildings have the highest level of LEED certification, um, and LEED certification means leadership in energy, environmental design, and a standard for green building. This means that they use natural resources from the bank's site and actual building constructions. The building is run by solar power, reutilizes recycled and reclaimed water, and serves as an example of environmental st sustainability for which all new buildings should be required to attain. Prime parking in front of the bank offers changing charging stations for electric vehicles. Ken also founded the First Green Bank Foundation, which has placed great emphasis on our water resources and water quality, the most important building block and sustaining life on Earth and, and in our area. The Foundation also participates in acquiring fragile environment lands in our area for the public domain with a purchase and a gift of large local tracts of land. Ken worked hard to usher through the important changes of the state constitution through the passage of Amendment 4, a pro-solar tax abatement measure approved by 70% of the Florida voters last <coughs> August. Its passage will enable businesses and homes to have greater accessibility to solar power to avoid outdated and polluting fossil fuels. In addition, Ken fought hard against Amendment 1, backed by big fossil fuel energy businesses, and helped defeat the green-driven constitutional amendment, which would have hurt the Sunshine State. Ken, it's an honor to have you in our town, in our award of business environments. Thank you so much for your work.
In conclusion, allow me to comment on the recent tree inventory, which has identified 126 large mature trees to be removed, mostly in Old Town and downtown areas due to their being dead, dying, and seriously diseased. While this may initially be upsetting to some, those educated residents who know the value, time, and maintenance required and cost of sustainability and diverse urban canopy will appreciate even more of these annual awards because they translate into large more canopies and trees. On a side note, the big storm of 92 came through and we really didn't act on that. And if we had acted on that and planted live oak trees then, we would be in a very different situation today. So it's even more important for us today to step up for future generations. A very wise man said once, plant a tree you will never ever sit under. While losing more than 126 trees on the supply side, the Mount Dora Friends of Environment have committed to provide resources for a minimum of 100 more trees in 2017. Provide that infrastructure for water ongoing maintenance in their place. A special thanks go to Mayor Jerome and Councilman Horst for their very, very gracious donations towards helping our tree fund and acquire our replacement trees. We thank you so much. Now it's also the time for me to extend our invitation to other board members and to our wonderful community. Um, if you could help us donate some money for our tree canopy, we would love it. It's very good, it's a good thing, and plant trees for the next generation. Thank you so much, and thank you for letting me present. received another card and it's up to uh, council uh, if we have no objections. Um, I have a card from uh, Mr. Um, Rennie would like to comment real quick if it's a no objection. And um, is it okay, uh, Mary, if I go ahead and for three minutes? Thank you very much. Uh, Norm, Mr. Rennie, please come up. Uh, state your name, three minutes. And address, name and address, please. How's everyone doing today? Good. All right, so it came to my attention. Oh, my name is Norm Renee. Um, I've been here 31 years. I used to have business downtown here. I miss it. I get complaints all the time. I'm here now in, for, um, for, I'm sorry, for Richard Bereshek. I think uh, this whole thing about this is a tragedy. It is just terrible about this wall. We have murals downtown. I look every day at these beautiful murals of what we have here in this artistic community. This is reality. This is what's important. When I see this, and I've known Richard for a couple years now, and he's just always a gentleman and he's always doing the right thing. Here we are with this wall which I thought was beautiful from the beginning. I was like, yes. But what happened to the, the private person there? The person that has this wall saying, shining out to our fair town, you know, welcome. Literally welcome. This is not even the beginning of what this beautiful wall can be. But we actually, I just went right through town and saw some murals that other artists have done. Why? We have horrible problems. And when I just found out, I never knew about the uh, row having all this done in his Green Bank. That's important. The beauty of this town is beautiful and important. And when I see this, uh, we really have deeper problems that we need to resolve than taking on some artist for a moment in time. Terrible. By the way, my address is 26 South Grove Street, apartment number three, Eustis, Florida, 32726. And thank you, all right? I just really, this is, we should be doing this, we should be doing some other things. Thank you. I appreciate your comment. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Council, for allowing that. Uh, Mary, uh, Ms. Brooks, you are up. Well, good evening, Council members. Good evening, residents. Uh, my name is Mary Brooks, the Public Information Officer for the Wakawa Parkway Project. 
for both the Florida Department of Transportation and the Central Florida Expressway Authority. A lot has happened in the last six months since I was here to visit with you. So without further ado, uh, for those a little unfamiliar with the project, of course we are trying to finish the Beltway around Central Florida. Uh, in addition to that, we're also expected to take some traffic off some of the local roads, remaining portions of 46, et cetera. Uh, for those, that, again, not familiar with the project, $1.6 billion, 25-mile uh, toll road. It does include some non-toll road improvements. I get the question very often, will we still be able to get from Mount Dora to Sanford without paying a toll? And the answer is yes. Uh, we're also doing a, a number of other um, things, including building a trail along portions of the parkway, and it's expected to have a significant economic development impact, nearly 36,000 jobs, both directly and indirectly. So one message we want folks to understand about the parkway is that it features all electronic tolling. You'll want to have either an e-pass or a sun pass, or else it will charge you higher tolls. Um, so we really encourage folks to get a transponder of one sort or the other. They both work on the parkway. So we actually have the, the DOT has their costs here. Again, it shows you the higher costs uh, for toll by plate, which is what program you would use if you don't have a transponder. But DOT also charges a monthly $2.50 administrative charge on top of that. So again, you really want to have a transponder. Uh, E-Pass uh, does have a slightly higher rate. CFX does not charge an administrative rate uh, for their pay by plate. Environmental uh, importance of this area can be understated. Um, this project includes a number of unique environmental protections, including uh, purchasing 3,400 acres of land for conservation, uh, building expansive wildlife bridges, and also moving a portion of County Road 46A out of the Seminole State Forest. If you've had the opportunity to use the department section that's open between County Road 435 and State Road 46, these are some of the environmental protections you'll see. On the right is a wildlife jump out. In case an animal does accidentally get into the corridor, it allows them to exit safely. On the left are, on the left are bat houses, which can accommodate up to 1,200 animals each. And then we have the floodplain bridge in the middle, which the animals have been using to get under the parkway since we were even building it. I mentioned the trail. We'll have about 10 miles of a multi-use trail uh, along the portions in East Lake and a small portion of Seminole County. And this will be a key linchpin in the connection of some of the other planned uh, trail extensions, West Orange Trail, Lake Wakaba Trail, and Seminole Wakaba Trail extension will make a great network for recreational use. Uh, this schedule shows you the various project sections on the left. The orange indicates the uh, design, which we're pretty much done with, except for one section in Seminole County. Blue represents the purchase of the property necessary. We should be finished with that by the end of this year. And then the green represents uh, construction, which God willing and the creek don't rise, by the end of 2021, we'll have the whole darn thing open. <laughs> so this uh, map is on the wakabaparkway.com uh, website. Um, it shows you the various sections in purple being done by the Central Florida Expressway Authority, and the sections in green being done by the DOT. You can see the years that each of the sections is expected to open to traffic. And then you can also see that we just recently opened a new section last week. Uh, hopefully some of you have gotten a chance to take a look at it. And that brings us to the CFX sections to give you an update. Uh, CFX is building 10 miles of the parkway. All of that is under construction now. As we mentioned, we just opened some of that last week. Uh, there will be three locations to get on and off or access interchanges, uh, and we were using about 500 workers a day on this project. There's been a lot of discussion that the parkway should have a really quote-unquote parkway feel, fit in with the rustic natural environment, so you can see some of how it's coming to pass uh, in real life, uh, the aesthetics that are part of this project. So we'll talk about the section we just opened last week, sections 1A and 1B, which take you from where 429 previously ended, uh, there at 441, all the way up to Kelly Park Road. It's about five miles. And we had uh, almost 200 people at our uh, ribbon cutting last week. Uh, so this should be, oh, just one second. A little bit from the. Uh, so this was just the ceremony that we held last week. A uh, number of the local dignitaries. In fact, you can see your honorable mayor's back of his head there on the right side of the screen, Mayor Jerome. 
Uh, so a lot of the folks were just uh, sort of commenting on the history uh, of the project as well as the many benefits it'll bring both to the environmental um, uh, surroundings as well as to a lot of the folks in the community. So um, we had, as I mentioned, almost 200 people in traffic. As soon as we opened the gates that day, about 3.30 was flowing uh, onto the parkway. So Mayor Jacobs is here. I don't know if you all can hear that. It's a really historic uh, moment with 30 years in the making for this project to be able to actually open uh, another significant section of the parkway, as you see there. So it's, uh, it's been very heavily used ever since. Mm. So moving on to the section still under construction, these sections are basically bordered by Round Lake Road, State Road 46, County Road 435, and then that north uh, area north of Kelly Park Road. Uh, we'll be finishing these, which will be the most important section for you all, more than likely, because it'll make that connection to State Road 46 with an expressway option in the spring of next year. So this... The system will be a multi-level interchange, um, sort of similar to 429 in turnpike, but maybe on a slightly smaller scale. Uh, but you can see just the massive, massive effort that goes into this type of project. This is continuing north across the uh, Orange Lake County line uh, to what we call Section 2C. This will be State Road 453, and this will be the connection to 46 uh, near Round Lake Road that folks coming to Mount Dora will be able to use. This is crossing Coronado Somerset, and you can see State Road 46 there in the distance. Um, we have been having and will have to continue to have a number of nighttime detours, road closures, so definitely you know, keep an eye out. If you don't follow the project on Facebook and Twitter, you may want to, because we're really keeping a lot of information going out to the community about those types of traffic impacts. So we came back down to the south end of the systems interchange, and now we're going to head to the right or to the east uh, to, as I say, East Lake County if you want to go to Seminole. Columbus Sorrento Road, uh, you can see a lot of the bridge work. You can see the tremendous amount of earthwork that goes in through this type of project. We're continuing east still. This is Section 2A. Uh, Section 2A was one of those uh, was purchased in the area where we bought land for conservation. This former pine plantation uh, was one of those large parcels. So uh, we're approaching now on County Road 435. And you can see up in the upper left corner uh, the ramp that to the current DOT section that's open. So when we finish this section, that ramp will go away. That is a temporary access, just at the YI. So just some quick facts about the CFX sections uh, to give you a sense of the scale we're talking about. When CFX has finished their um, sections, they will have excavated 3.6 million cubic yards of earth. That's enough to fill 18 large, very large cruise ships. Uh, we'll have driven 40 miles of bridge foundation piles. And we'll have placed 2.3 million square yards of sod, enough to cover 423 football fields. So you really can't be understated the scope of these types of projects. We mentioned a section that's open already, uh, that opened in uh, January 2016. We've done some additional landscaping. If you've traveled, you're familiar with some of these uh, views of the parkway there. We've been very surprised by the amount of traffic on this first section. Uh, we're getting you know, 60 to 70,000 trips a month. We're at nearly a million trips since this, uh, this section opened, and it was just a three mile stretch. So coming then to Mount Dora, this is what uh, you all really have come here to hear. Uh, sections 3A and 3B are the sections uh, that are 46 and 441 uh, that will be uh, improvements as part of this project. The DOT has selected the um, contractor. We'll be having a public meeting on these sections for uh, August 24th. You'll see more information about that. And then you're going to start to see construction probably September, October time frame. Uh, 46 will be uh, six lane from just west of 441 all the way towards uh, Round Lake Road. And then 441 will be six lane from just south of around the Natoma all the way down to the county line. So this is just the aerial showing you that uh, eastern portion of the 46. You can see the CFX uh, exchange there and the pond there at the end. This will be your typical non-toll, widening, sidewalks, uh, et cetera. This is not a tolled section. Same thing coming towards the west, toward 441 and Mount Dora. Uh, you'll have the widening. There will be a very different look uh, for travelers and residents in this area as part of this project 
right now 441 goes over State Road 46. This project uh, will result in a at grade or ground level signalized intersection with traffic lights, but also with that um, flyover ramp for the heavy traffic anticipated coming from the north, trying to go east toward the parkway. So again, we will have a public meeting on August 24th right next door at your uh, Civic Center, Community Center there, so you'll get to find out a lot more about what's gonna happen and when. And this is uh, just kind of an animation that the engineers put together to kind of show you what that difference is gonna look like. Coming around on the right is sort of north uh, in the 441, and then the south in the 441 is coming around the top. Uh, in the lower left corner, you can see the Veranda Apartments. Upper right is Southern Air Mobile Home Park, just to kind of uh, orient you. And then you can see that <coughs> lane, that flyover ramp coming from the north and heading to the east. You can also see the city water plant there uh, in the upper right corner now. And it'll come down to ground level in just a second. It's gonna take some significant effort uh, to reconfigure this interchange. So you'll have to bear with us. Construction is gonna be a little painful for a little while. So we're coming out of Mount Dora here. You can see the sidewalks, curb and gutter, safety medians, etc. cetera, uh, heading to 441. You can see that flyover ramp. Uh, during the pd &E study, that was a, a point of concern that some of the concepts had that as high as 30 feet in the air. Um, but with the city and the county and the residents, we were able to work uh, to get that down to just about five feet higher than the ramp, uh, the overpass that's out there now. So it'll be a pretty negligible difference in terms of the height of that. And now we're coming from the south on 441. Uh, and you can kind of see the way we were able to lower that ramp was to depress 441 or kind of lower the elevation of that road. So you can kind of see it's uphill there, uh, two degrees, et cetera. Once the major construction is done, there will also be a subsequent landscaping project uh, following all of the Wakaba Parkway sections. So we've got the project team in place. As I mentioned, we're looking at fall to get started here fairly soon. Uh, it's 3.8 miles between the two uh, sections. Um, some of the initial construction impacts are the biggest ones you're gonna see. Uh, we'll be building along the 46th corridor, we'll be building the north side first. Uh, and then we have to build a temporary um, US 441 detour there on the west side uh, of 441 as you know it today. And ultimately the traffic will be shifted onto that detour while we dig out the hill, put the foundations in for the new flyover ramp, take out the old bridge, et cetera. So it's gonna be some significant changes in the way we get through this area for a while until we can build this. So I highly encourage everyone to attend the meeting on the 24th so you can find out more about how all of that's gonna work. Section 5 also started uh, in June. This is the realignment of County Road 46A out of the Seminole State Forest. Um, and we uh, actually have the project team here. It's about two and a half miles. And we will be um, continuing the clearing. We're almost done the clearing, actually. Before we could start the clearing, however, we had to excavate and relocate gopher tortoises, which are our keystone protected species. You can see some of the little guys there. We got about 25 out of the corridor after excavating about 46 burrows, and those are taken to a state licensed recipient site. So you can see from the air the clearing that's been done along the corridor for the realignment there. Um, the one in the middle is kind of approaching at 46. You can kind of see the open section, the interchange there in the distance, and then there's some of the uh, earth and drainage work. So big section that's also going to be an impact for folks traveling uh, along 46 and East Lake is section six. We split it in half here so you can see a little more detail. Uh, this is a section that's gonna largely replace State Road 46 with the elevated parkway, which are the two gray lines you see there, and then the non-tolled service road and trail, which is sort of the red and magenta line that you see as well. Some sections of 46 will remain in place uh, to continue private property access, but for the most part, the parkway and the service road will replace 46 going through this area. You can also see the emblems for the wildlife uh, bridges. Uh, we have about 80 feet of clearance right now for the two tunnels there in Rock Springs Run. Um, the wildlife bridges we'll be building will have about 7,700, almost a mile and a half of safe passage for the animals. And then we also are gonna be building a brand new bridge over the Wakaiva River uh, that's gonna be very, again, very different. It'll be about 60 feet high, uh, have a lot of aesthetics. The idea was to get it up into the tree canopy buffer it visually, also kind of open the river for more enjoyable experience for those who canoe and kayak on the river. And then you can see by comparison the existing bridge, which will be removed once the new bridge is, is built. 
It actually will be three bridges going across the river, the eastbound and westbound parkway bridges, and then that non-tolled service road bridge that will also carry the trail. The schematic shows you just how high that bridge will be in comparison to the existing bridge, and also you can see the area where the animals can pass safely underneath as opposed to conflicting with the traveling public. So here in Lake County, basically from this fall on, you're gonna see a lot of activity in your area. So I do encourage you to go to wapapaparkway.com, get on our Facebook and Twitter feeds uh, so that you can get those up to moment um, traffic updates because it's gonna be uh, pretty fast and furious and pretty interesting for a while. Crossing the river into Seminole County, we have section 7A. This again follows that elevated parkway with the non-toll service roads. Uh, we'll have roundabouts also along these sections in Seminole. Again, we're basically replacing what you know is 46 today with that elevated parkway and the non-toll service roads. Continuing to the east, you can see where it starts to dip down to uh, meet with 417 and I-4. That construction will start early next year. This is kind of a concept just to show you what it'll be looking like coming out of one of those communities along 46 on the Seminole County section with the roundabouts. And then this is the last non-told section, section 7B, which goes from Orange Boulevard to just about I-4, just finishing the six laning sidewalks, other urban improvements along there. That one will be one of the last ones to start. The big kahuna, as I like to say, is section eight, which makes that connection to I-4 and 417. Uh, we've got, we are actually advertising for that in just a couple of months. By fall of next year, you'll start to see activity on that one as well. And then just basically the schedule for Seminole County. Nuts and bolts, it's gonna be a lot of work coming up very soon and it's gonna go on for three years and it's gonna be a little crazy. So we just ask for everyone's patience and you know, just to stay plugged in to what's happening and when. So with that, I'll happily take any questions. Uh, thank you, Mary. Um, I've, I've been in, over my elderly years seen a lot of um, construction, I've seen a lot of road work. My father was a construction engineer, a civil engineer, had his own construction company. And I have never heard, I've never, I've never experienced a better explanation by FDOT mm -hmm. uh, through you and, and the expressway. Uh, you do us uh, justice, you do your employer justice, uh, and uh, I think it's exceptional. If, if the public is not informed, it's their fault. Uh, and for not paying attention, it's all over. And I just wanted to express how impressed I am with uh, being keeping you up, uh, keeping us up. It's a, it's a project that I have a lot of passion about, so it's very easy. I want everyone to know what's going on and have the latest and greatest. So thank you very much. I'll let I will you blame you when the construction gets started. Yes, yes. <laughs> that's my cell phone up there. So jot it down now because you're going to want to call me in a couple of months. Thank you. Any other comments? Questions for Mary when she's here? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. It was great. <laughs> for those of you who haven't uh, driven on that new stretch of road, uh, you got to get on it. It's You're going to look at some of the most beautiful scenery for that five miles that you, you ever see anywhere. It's just, it, 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 we live in an area, but you don't realize until you see from a different perspective on how beautiful the countryside is around here. It's just absolutely gorgeous. And, uh, and the highland is beautiful too. Thank you. And even exiting on Kelly Park Road and going east to Round Lake Road, I mean, that's a beautiful drive. It is great. We're living in uh, exciting times, that's for sure. Okay, where are we at now? We got down there. Okay, we, we want okay, approval of the agenda. Not much of an agenda tonight, so. So moved. And a second? A second. Any uh, changes, questions? Okay. All in favor? Aye. 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 No objections. Okay, uh, approval of minutes. Uh, we have approval of the City Council. I'm going to take these separate and uh, I approval of City Council work session uh, minutes dated July 13, 2017. And we'll look at a second here. Where is which, which ones did you, was this one for? Which state? 18th, okay. I have a, a motion for um, approval for the 13th. Move to approve. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you. Aye. Approval of the City Council regular session minutes dated July 18th, 2017. Ms. Johns uh, gave us an amended one tonight, and inside there, they're all marked in yellow. They're all marked here in yellow where she had made some different corrections and uh, the, the clarify some of the information that she put in there. So this is the one in your 
and this is one you will be uh, typed out and uh, put on the website, and this is one that you'll be approving tonight. So I have a motion. I move approval. A second. Second. Thank you. Did you any comments? Ms. Hayes, do you have a comment? Uh, no, Mayor. I just want wondered if you would like the city clerk to give you a summary of the changes for the public, just so they would be aware of those. Okay, we can That's do that. Fine. Ms. Johns, do you mind? Yes, sir, I would be happy to. With regard to the um, the 425 North Alexander Street, mm -hmm. the original motion was made by Vice Mayor Tillett, and then it failed upon roll call vote. Mm -hmm. When I did the minutes, I didn't put that Mayor Jerome asked for roll call vote and that the motion failed, which clarified why I had that that roll call vote there. And then on the next page, Mr. Rothson made his motion directing the city manager to develop a recommended strategy. And then Mr. Slaby amended Mr. Rothson's motion. So then Vice Mayor Tillett seconded the amendment to the motion that was made by Mr. Slaby to amend. So that was separate. So then I read back the original motion that was made by Mr. Rothson and I read back the amendment that was made by Mr. Slaby. Then we did a vote on just the amendment and then we did a vote just on the main motion. So what I've done for you all in yellow is it's an explanation of the changes that I made to reflect what I just explained. Thank you. One other thing that I did when I wrote the minutes is I omitted the roll call vote. I thought it was a voice vote on um, the resolution for the Donnelly House four miler. I went back and listened to those minutes today. It was in fact a roll call vote and I added that back in. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you. You're welcome. Uh, all in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you. Now we have approval of resolution number 2017-106, the joint attachment agreement with the city of uh, Leesburg. And uh, can we have the title read by title, or the resolution read by title, Ms. Cockroft? Yes, sir, Mr. Mayor. Resolution number 2017-106, a resolution of the city of Mount Dora, Florida, approving a joint attachment agreement between the city of Mount Dora and city of Leesburg, authorizing the mayor to execute said joint attachment agreement providing written, written approval to assign the agreement to Summit Communications Inc., providing for legislative findings and intent, providing authority to the city manager for implementing administrative actions, providing for a savings provision, and providing for scriveners errors, conflicts, severability, and effective date. Thank you very much. Ms. Hayes. Uh, yes, yes, thank you, Mayor, Council Members. Um, Mr. Charles Rebels is here if you have any questions of him, so I'd just like to point that out first um, because he's been involved in this process from, from years back. But this is essentially a new agreement with the city of Leesburg for our two strands of fiber that we have, dark fiber, um, to continue the service of those on the poles that we currently have in the city of Mount Dora to add a CPI for those poles to be paid for in the future um, at a different rate versus a static rate, which they've been in the past. Um, to amend the contract that allows Leesburg, if they wish to assign the contract to Summit through a sale or through a, some kind of agreement, that allows Summit to accept that or another company if that were the case and would continue the service through the city of Mount Dora. Um, pretty much, I think, Mr. Rebels, that's pretty much it in a nutshell. Um, this continues our service with the city of Leesburg as well as promotes the future for the city of Mount Dora in the Innovation District to run this potential fiber out into that area as well as increase it in that area. Summit is also one of the providers that has, uh, has been involved in the process with Lake Nona, so we expect that they will also be in the process for our innovation district. So it sets us up in, uh, I think, a very good position for the innovation way as well as the city of Mount Dora. So again, um, I would open it if you have any questions for Mr. Rebels, but um, thank you and we would like to see it approved, sir. Have a motion for approval? Move to approve. Second. Thank you. Um, any comments, questions? Only well, it's got the protected language in there that I look for, so I appreciate that. Yeah, it was Thank a nice you. contract that they gave everybody their 
the different things that they needed to do, Leesburg, their options, and thus gives us a lot more protections and some cost increases in the future that wasn't in the previous contract. So good work on everybody's part. Uh, anybody from the public wish to address this item? Being none, Ms. Johnson, can we have a roll call vote, please? Yes, sir. Mr. Tucker? Yes. Mr. Rolfson? Yes. Ms. Hoax? Yes. Mr. Crail? Yes. Ms. Tillett? Yes. Mr. Jerome? Yes. Resolution number 2017-112, support of home rule in Florida. Uh, can we have the uh, resolution read by title, Ms. Calcroft? Yes, sir. Resolution number 2017-112, a resolution of the city of Mount Jordan, Florida, supporting all legislative efforts to protect and strengthen the rights of Florida citizens to govern themselves under municipal home rule powers conferred upon them by the Florida Constitution, providing for legislative findings and intent providing for authority to the city manager for implementing administrative actions, providing for the mayor to execute this resolution, providing for a savings provision, and providing for Scrivener's errors, conflict, severability, and effective date. Thank you. Ms. Hayes? Uh, yes, thank you, Mayor. Council members, um, again, this is um, support of home rule. Um, we've discussed this several meetings over the last two months. We've talked about um, the uh, fact that we believe um, from a city perspective, this government government body or governing body is the closest to the people to protect the people's rights. Um, granted, we know that there's also changes that happen along the way, but that we need to protect those rights. Um, and I would like to actually um, turn it over, if you're okay with that, Mayor, to Council Member Rolfson, who actually wrote the resolution um, with support of our, our legal counsel, of course. But um, he is really chairing this and championing this. And I, again, I, I appreciate his services um, in this respect as well as with the Florida League City, but I think that the opportunity to speak in reference to this also should be given to him at this point. Hey, well, make the motion you get the first to speak. I'll speak. I so move. Second. Mr. Olson. Thank you, Mayor and Council. Um, we're all familiar, this is mainly for those in attendance that are not at the dais here, but we're very familiar with the current legislative effort to erode cities' rights for in home rule. Home rule is a constitutional right given to the people of to the cities and the people that are within cities, and it's uh, there are there's erosion into that. There was this past session, and there certainly will be this coming session. So uh, there are also statements made by legislative leadership in Florida that they believe that the legislature is closer to the people than city government. We all know that's not true, and uh, I can't believe any uh, legislator would say that, but they did, and it's recorded in, uh, by various media that, that heard that. And so there is a duty, I believe, and we believe, upon cities to try to protect home rule on behalf of you all and we all. And that's an absolute duty. And um, the resolution that you see before you and that you down on the website, no doubt, reading, uh, is supported by the Florida League of Cities. I didn't have an exact hand, I plagiarized some from the Florida City League of Cities draft, I'm proud to say that. I thank council for your input into that and, and refining it uh, appropriately, so I thank you for that. Uh, my expectation is that the city of Mount Dora will be a leader statewide in seeing that uh, home rule is protected as much as we possibly can. I know I'm speaking to the choir here in, in uh, this council, but there's no reason why we can't be the leader. I believe this resolution will be the first one presented to the Florida League of Cities this two weeks from now uh, at uh, the annual meeting when all of these things will be considered. And my hope is that led by Mount Dora, every city in the state of Florida will pass a similar resolution, which is my recommendation to the policy committee on which I serve on the Florida League. Uh, and the, uh, the importance of that is driven by the fact that this room was packed today. It was packed because that's as one third or one fifth as much of that is what legislators gather at the town hall meetings. We gather this every day, every council meeting. Uh, and so that's to, you are you all are exhibit A to the value of home rule. So this re resolution will be presented to the league, and I uh, I think it'll be a great beginning, and I'm happy 
to participate with this council in making Mount Dora the leader in that area. So I'm, I recommend its adoption. Priscilla. Yes. Um, I, uh, I agree with everything that uh, Councilman Walson has said. And sometimes it's hard to understand how it affects you individually. Um, like, oh, okay, well, maybe the city has to ask for things from the legislature every time we want to do something. But um, it goes down to the basic ability for you to elect or unelect us every two years. Um, I know that not last year, but the year before, the push was for um, across the board four-year terms. I thought three year three year terms um, whether the citizens wanted their elected officials to have three years in office or not um, luckily that um, initiative died in committee and um, it didn't go anywhere so that's just one example of how home rule actually benefits all of us as citizens here um, and, and I guess I would urge those of you who are interested in this um, to call your local representative and tell them uh, what you think about home rule and and whether whether you believe it's a benefit to you or not I'm hoping we will the city will still have a um, some sort of an educational um, program not program but some sort of educational in, uh, information posted on the city's website in the very near future um, that will explain a little bit about it and and, uh, and the importance I want to say thank you what I neglected to do and I would like to uh, provide a an appropriate amendment at the end of the resolution I should have done that with my initial motion I can redraft my motion at the second degrees uh, to include this following amendment under at the final where here is hereby resolved I neglected to add we're, well let me back up the resolution is going to be sent if it's passed to the governor of the state of Florida to the state legislative delegation representing Lake County uh, to the congressional delegation serving Florida and to all the cities within Lake County and uh, I guess that is added in there it is added in there all the cities and I would add managers but we'll do that anyway it's a matter of performance okay fine no problem any um, any other comments from council and um, really this is um, th this is something that a lot of states always try to do uh, take away your home rule our federal government likes to take away the home rule of the states okay it's in the same manner and uh, it wasn't too long ago you heard comments coming out of Washington saying we know best how to spend your money okay and that irks states and it irks the local taxpayers and this when we when we talk about like, like Mr. Rolls was talking about it, it's not right and when the state wants to take over the control of your of your local government and they and Mr. Olson when you're going to these different committees be mindful of some legislation that's out there and the other way they attack your home your, your home rule is mandates without funding <laughs> happens all the okay? time and that's one of the worst ways that they do it because I'm they mandate you to do things and they don't need the the, the legislate you know that you know the, the constitutional amendments and different things to do it says to do and that's really wrong also so keep an eye on those kind of legislative processes also um, anybody from the public wish to address this issue seeing none uh, miss Johnson can we have a roll call vote please yes sir mr. Rolfson yes mr. Tucker yes Ms. Hope. yes mr. Crail yes Ms. Gillette yes Mayor Jerome yes uh, approval of resolution number 2017-116 the Lake Sumner Met Metropolitan Planning Organization reorganization and um, Ms. Confroff would you please read the resolution by title yes sir Mr. Mayor thank you resolution number 2017-116 a resolution of City of Mount Dora Florida opposing the proposed reorganization of the Lake Sumter Metropolitan Planning Organization providing for scrimmage errors conflict severability and effective date Thank you, Ms. Chow, or Ms. Hayes. Thank you, Mayor, Council Members. Um, this is a request to um, for opposing the proposed reorganization of the Lake Sumter Metropolitan Planning Organization. Um, Lake Sumter MPO was created in 2004 
um, by Florida Statute 339.175, um, providing the MPO's duties, responsibilities, and the organizational structure. Sumter County petitioned Governor Scott to dissolve the Lake Sumter MPO and require Lake and Sumter Counties to join the Metro Plan or Orlando MPO. Um, City Council has been given a chance to discuss the opportunity to oppose the proposed reorganization of the Lake, Lake Sumter Metropolitan Plan organization. Um, and I present to you as part of the backup, all, most of the cities anyway in Lake County that we could find online, all of their um, uh, corresponding resolutions in which they support the opposition of, for the proposed reorganization and they've been included in your packet. Um, Mayor? Um, just real quick on this issue. Um, on the I'm on the executive committee of the uh, the MPO, and there's been a a movement by Lake uh, from Sumner County to re reorganize the whole um, the whole thing. And they actually, their their one of their first recommendation was to bring it down to just five voting members. Okay, this is a large organization. The MPO, the Metropolitan Planning Organization, is large. A lot of the things that you saw presented tonight from um, Mary Brooks. Uh, from the Florida Department of Transportation originates locally. We have the local input. Uh, the, these ideas uh, for the different roads that we have throughout the, the state, 441 expansions, uh, whether or not that's uh, the priority, which I made that clear today, it is our priority, 441, uh, versus uh, 44. 44 is going to be expanded out. Uh, there's, um, there's talk with them also going out to the um, um, extending Round Lake Road, all the way out to 44 and connected into 439, that's going to run through Eustis. So there's a lot of things that TMPO does for us and a lot of things that they do for Lake Sumner. And um, uh, Mr. Crail is the alternate and he's attended a few meetings and he uh, sees firsthand what goes on <coughs> at, at the meetings and the kind of work that we get involved in. And, um, and there's been a lot of, um, a lot of other issues uh, with the organization where uh, Lake Sumner isn't happy with our current leadership and they want to uh, get rid of the current leadership um, right now and with no backup plan as to transition as to what are we going to do how are we going to continue with all these projects and as you see tonight there's a massive <coughs> amount of projects that were that the city of Mount Thor is involved in we have trails that we're working on there's a lot of projects that we're dealing with the trails. There's some funding that needs to be done. We got Highland Street. We got a lot of different things that the MPO is involved in with us. And for that to come to a halt, I think would be have a very serious impact on um, Mount Dora. And I'm looking at it more from a, a selfish reason, Mount Dora, because we are involved in a lot with the county, with the MPO, and with the, the organization. The resolution that you have tonight is different. The one thing different from the rest of the, uh, the resolutions. It had to do with um, the ability that they said not, not to join the, uh, the, metro, the Orlando Metropolitan. You'll see it's not in ours. We're so close to Orlando, okay? And just in case, I don't know what's gonna happen with the organization, in case it goes a different way or whatever, uh, with the vote doesn't go the right way. Um, with us it's okay, but I mean, with, with the, the whole organization, and um, we want to have the flexibility. We don't want to black box ourselves with a resolution not to be able to be part of the Orlando organization if we ever, the opportunity uh, comes to us to be able to do that. So I don't want us to be blocked by a resolution on that item. So I left that out of our resolution and uh, prefer that, ask that to be removed from our resolution. So um, anybody else care to speak on this issue? Uh, Mr. Crail. Uh, I agree with you, Mr. Mayor, um, completely. I, I fervently hope that Sumter County will reconsider and, and, and stay. I think we're better with um, combined uh, than we would be separately. But I think they're being presumptuous to um, uh, say what we should do. Um, you know, we'll make our own decisions, um, and um, I, I hope we can stay together, but I, I just think it's wrong for them to say what we should be doing. So I support this. this um, I, I also think that we don't, that if, if we were to be part of a greater Orlando area MPO, I think we would be way down on the, on the food chain. And this way, this 
this just sort of reminds me of home rule. Um, the, the lower down that you can keep your sphere of influence, I think the better uh, for all of us, that where, where our priorities are addressed um, and then blended in, into the larger whole. So I, I heartily endorse this. Mr. Parker. Yeah, I've got lots of questions. Uh, when the July 25th meeting that uh, Mr. Cole discusses in the uh, packet. What was that? I'm sorry, was The that? July 25th meeting. He, yeah. You all were meeting on July 25th to discuss further. What was the outcome of that meeting? I'm trying to think if I... I don't think that meeting... First, because I don't think that meeting... We're, we're having another meeting coming up on the, tw on the August the 23rd. I think it was deferred. It was no, that deferred. Okay, yeah, it had it been because I'm trying to recollect that and that wasn't uh, discussed. Okay. It wasn't brought up in, in, as a topic at one of the meetings recently. Because there's about a half, four or five things that were going to be on that agenda. And I'd like to know what happened, so since it didn't ever occur. Is that the, you went to a meeting on my half one time. And yeah, but that was you're saying that. July 23rd? John? It says right here, uh, Jeff Cole's email of uh, July 17th. Okay, I, I attended a meeting, I think, in June, but nothing in July. So I went to July meetings, and we didn't discuss that, so it probably was not on the agenda. It says right here, the following is what we ultimately agreed to discuss with our representative boards on July 25th. Reducing the current 16 voting membership to 11 voting members to include three Lake County Commissioners, one Sumter County Commissioner, one Sumter County City, six Lake County Cities. Shifting the MPO to a fully independent agency that would take up to three years to achieve. Having only the voting members of the MPO and the Executive Director and Legal Counsel at the table during MPO meetings, allowing for the appointments of alternative. Well, I read the letter, but I'm just trying to recall I, back I think to Mayor, the 20, 25th and I'm so I'm reading it. I think that was when the county discussed some alternate things that some oh. brought forward. That was the county. Yeah, yes. right. That's, that was the county's meeting that was held. Okay. Uh, not not the not the, the MPO, MPO meeting. MPO. Yeah. That's why. That's why I wasn't ringing a bell with me. It wasn't the MPO meeting. Yeah. It was. Uh, Did we know what the county decided? The county is basically they. Um, um, the county is uh, rejecting the reorganization. From what I'm understanding. And that's included in your packet, yes, sir. Exhibit one, a Lake County, where it refers from um, the uh, Tim Sullivan. That is their support letter in support of that rejection. All right. And, uh, and in support of the uh, rejection. And talk with some people today. Um, there was a uh, workshop today, and um, that we might not be Mount Dora might not be part of that eleven if it went that way. Okay. Uh, we could be cut. We could be not one of the cities that would be on the table and we and we get I'll tell you Mount Dora is probably one of the the small we're one of the small cities but we're one of the largest cities as far as the uh, economic impact to this county and along that same vein uh, the MPO leadership yes I read that full audit a year ago when it came out mm -hmm. and it was scathing it's uh, it, you got to put everything in context yes it was it was scathing. Uh, to be honest with you, I raised. Now I was a criminal investigator for a lot of years, for thirty of them, and not having all of their records or anything else, I kind of raised an eyebrow with some of the audit findings. And uh, those weren't the those wasn't the audit. That was a inspector general uh, from the county came out and did something at that point. Yeah, and I understand that some of those things, and if I'm wrong, please correct me, that some of the audit findings have not been addressed almost a year later. They have been. They'll, they'll, they have been addressed, yes. Okay, they have been addressed. I don't know if all 100%, but they have been addressed in a large total, yes. Yeah, because it's... Uh, and Mr. And Mr. Fish, is, um, there was a contract that was uh, put out uh, by the executive committee uh, that was approved by the executive committee and then voted on by the membership to uh, put basically put him on probation, and which he has uh, been really good and uh, going through the probation items and to do the cleanups and do the different things. And there is a CPA firm on staff now that is um, doing the things that the state, um, if you ever, you work for the federal government, I, 
think, right? You work for a part of government agency. For 30 like, years. 30 years, okay. And I think a lot of us here have worked for the governments in different capacities. And uh, um, the, unfortunately, and uh, not speak badly of, uh, of Mary's um, bosses, but uh, they put out, the Florida Department of Transportation put out some um, requirements for um, invoicing that was heavy. When I say heavy, 600 pages they put out their, re their monthly reports for reimbursement, okay? And, uh, and I think if you remember that one packet we had, 600 pages, so just put that into, into context. And there's some fault to be had with the leadership, no, when I say leadership, the board of the, board of the uh, MPO and, um, and some of the, uh, the, the, the past uh, board members, not giving the executive director the tools and the support necessary to do the job, and I think in a professional uh, manner at the time, and maybe not being there for them, and uh, at the times needed. Things are different. Um, the last year or so, things have been a lot different. Moving forward, TJ is uh, TJ Fish is a a good a good representative for the MPO. A lot of the things you do that you see that's happening around this area. That the trails, everything is a result of his leadership and getting these things done. So um, there, there is. Uh, go, we're, we're on August the 23rd. We're going to be voting on his, on his contract, whether or not to accept his, um, his resignation because he sent in a resignation, his volunteer his resignation. Uh, my own personal thought on it. My, own, you know, my dealing with Mr. Fish over the years, uh, at the, being a council person years ago, and as of now. Um, I am going to be supportive of him at that point, unless this council um, directed me as a group to not to be, but I, as my own personal, uh, I am going to be supportive of um, him continuing on. I don't know if that's going to be his final decision or not, but uh, I'm, I'll be talking in uh, support of his uh, leadership yet. Do you have more? Yes, I do. Uh, regardless of that 600 pages, going through that audit, and I don't want to rehash the audit, but things I can recall off the top of my head, employees quote unquote given permission to work from home that nobody knew about, uh, his documentation that he was at working by seven o'clock but there's only two or three emails before 10.30 and certain days he couldn't be found. Uh, I question that sort of leadership. We all did and it's all been addressed. Okay, well, if it's all been addressed, I'll be quite honest with you. I'll put my faith in your word on this because I have some serious reservations. But if no, you we say all, it's no, been addressed, I will let with it'll us. rest on you. There's there's been a lot. Um, the, the, believe me, um, at the MPO meetings, uh, this has been addressed and addressed and addressed, and there was no, um, we'll say. Um, reservation of words and what you're saying uh, what you just mentioned tonight the words you mentioned just tonight have been mentioned in the public at the MPO meetings and uh, some people have concerns but there's there's dynamics that you that I can see going on that um, weren't deserving I'm going to put it uh, simply from that it just weren't, weren't deserving of some of the actions that were taken um, against them at this point um, I could be wrong, could be wrong, and uh, I hope I'm not, uh, but I don't know what his decision is going to be, and I don't know what the vote's going to be coming up on the 23rd. And um, they might vote to accept his resignation, and then uh, we're going to be stuck at that point with um, going through a transition that nobody is prepared for at this point. And, um, I have a question. Go ahead. Ms. Oaks. Okay, um, I agree that Right now, if I remember correctly, having sat on that board also, each municipality is represented. And I think that's extremely important that that stay because that's how you're able to um, express the needs that have to do with roadways and all these different projects, the exchanges and everything. It's my opinion, probably TJ had some issues in his structure of management and it maybe wasn't as tight as it needed to be. But in having read a lot of it, because I follow it fairly closely, I do think, um, Mr. Tucker, they're trying to put those controls in place. Now, whatever happens on your meeting in August, is because he has um, submitted his resignation, 
I think he has some intellectual properties in his head and in his experience that um, would take a while to replace. Not that you wouldn't address it, but there are things, and there's always critical moments and critical points in time, and I think we as a county, both of them, we've got a lot of things going on that really needs to stay forward for us to stay in the queue of all the things that are happening. Um, I believe what Sumter County wanted in reducing it to such a small group was not going to improve and, and make it better. I think it would create even bigger issues. Um, so I think they're moving along the lines that would be in our best interest at this point in time, and that's where I I can fully Bias agree with 90% of the resolution. Yeah, but I, 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 I have think major he probably had, he had a different style that was probably a little looser than what needed to be for the documents. And I'm sure the requirements from FDOT and some of the different things, we've all seen it with grants and things, the paperwork sometimes is more than what you're getting back. But you do have a responsibility to figure out how to meet those needs or get explanations, and I think that's been handled now. That's been handled. His last his last report his last report he sent in went through without any rejections, um, so it was accepted uh, without. Have any the empty income. seats? For me. Have the empty seats been filled with uh, his department? I, uh, last thing I saw, there was like seven or eight people under him, and there was like three or four vacancies. Oh no, no, there's no. From what I'm understanding, there is no vacancies in there because he doesn't have that big of a staff. Yeah, I know that. Okay, and that's uh, what I said. He had about they, seven people under him. They have a um, well, what they what he did, and, uh, and it was a mistake on his part. He hired uh, when he when they were hiring a person to take over this responsibility of doing these reports. He hired a financial expert, uh, an accountant, or who he hired on staff to do this, and um, it didn't work out. So in that two or three month period that this person that he was able to determine this this person wasn't the person he needed on that job and they got rid of him, it produced a lot of reports that got rejected by the DOT at that point. So that all had to be cleaned up, redo without that. Now we have a, uh, a CPA consultant on, uh, that's hired as a consultant, not a staff member yet, and uh, but they're looking at um, and they'll make recommendations I think as far as bringing somebody on full-time staff over there to, to fill that position. But right now, CPA is uh, handling, uh, putting those little things that only CPA knows how to do, okay? And uh, to be, you know, fair on that standpoint. Um, you know, getting the, what's required, what's asked, and then putting the paperwork in place so they can, so it can be, all the data can be collected in a timely fashion at that point. Uh, Mr. Olson. Mr. Thank Stone. you, Mayor and Council. Um, I support the resolution. <coughs> for the uh, following reasons. My, my representative is our mayor, and I expect if our mayor sees a problem, he's gonna come back and tell me, and I'm gonna deal with it at that time. If he supports it, I'll generally support it, and I don't know of any reason why I shouldn't support this. First of all, the three things that come to mind are there's as you mentioned, Mayor, there's very, sounds like very poor planning in the transition process. If they're trying to do a transition, uh, to dump it from 13 or so members down to five, uh, that's a power grab in my opinion. Mm -hmm. And um, agreeing with uh, Ms. Tillett that uh, I think we would get absorbed inappropriately for the clout that we deserve in Lake County as, as Mount Dora. Uh, we would get absorbed into Orlando and Orange, and Orange County area. I'm not sure where we'd come out on that. Now we have some, some clout because of our relationship. We do have a JPA with Orange County, so that I can understand why that part was removed in order to keep that uh, flexible. Uh, so that was probably a wise move. So I, I see a power grab. I think also it was a, an, a, it was an executive director attack through this process. They didn't, even the, you know, the executive director, TJ, needed uh, some guidance, not, and now he's been given that guidance to try to change the whole process to, just because they didn't like the executive director, I think is wrong. And so I, I support it for that reason. And, um, yeah, um, Mr. Rolfson's last point is the is the point that I wanted to make that that the purpose of this resolution is to uh, voice our displeasure with trying to have 
the old organization disbanded and subsuming us into the greater metropolitan. Whatever issues that there are with the director of this organization, I believe the organization can and should handle. As, as far as you know, who who is the civilian director? But to the the board of directors are, are the are the, in, the individual representatives from the individual cities and, and the counties, and um, we have appointed you know our mayor and, and Mr. Crail as, as our representatives, and that's a that's what this resolution addresses. It doesn't address the. Who they hire to 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 do the, to do the day to day business? I agree with you. There were some hair raising you know, um, findings in 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 that audit, but this resolution keeps the current structure of the organization together, and I believe we, that it best serves our citizens to do it this way instead of being becoming part of a larger Orlando organization. So I, I, I will support this. Point of order, do we have a motion to approve it? No, we don't. We don't. I'll move, I'll move approval. No, and I'll second. No, we don't. We've been discussing. Uh, well, I, I, John, I, I was at the meeting when the auditor made his report a year or so ago, and I agree with you, it was the most scathing um, audit meeting I've ever been in, and I've been in a lot of them. Um, and I have spoken and, and, and uh, communicated with uh, Mr. Fish about that. Um, I do think this um, CPA consulting arrangement has helped um, at subsequent meetings. I feel better about it. I also feel a lot better. I don't know, does everybody receive either weekly or every couple weeks a report from Mr. Fish about the events? Week, week, uh, the weekly. He does a weekly report now. Okay. Maybe oh, not. No, no, I'm sorry. You don't get, okay, you know what? And that's probably my fault too. I can, when I get them, when I get them, I will forward them to uh, Ms. Johnson who's had and make them, the, the put them out to everybody. Um, um, that, um, those have been a relief to me because instead of a meeting once a month, and, and again, I'm an alternate, so I, I, I only go in the mayor's absence, but um, a lot of good information in there, uh, updated, and, and I think it does address, I don't know 100%, but it does address um, certainly the major concerns brought out in that audit. It's well done, um, and that has, that has helped me um, uh, as, I'm, as I've been following the process. I'll put a note to have um, Mr. Fish put uh, Ms. Johns on the distribution list this way. I won't forget to do it. It'll automatically be go to her all the time when he sends out. Yeah, I think that I, I, it's, it's a fairly brief um, report, and, and, and it is very brief. Help, it's been helpful. Hey, what's, what's going on? And uh, but uh, but as of right now, what you know, just real quick on your on your. Um, we're, I know we're still discussing, but let's have a motion for approval. We do. We do. Oh, we do. We do. Oh, we do have one. Okay. Thought, okay. That's okay. And um, the. Um, I shouldn't say that because I just lost my train of thought on that one. But senior moments. It's one of those senior moments, right? But that's okay because I think we, we, we address a lot of the you know a lot of the issues that we were talking about um, public comment, and we're going to let the public address it. Anybody from the public wish to address this issue? Being none, I couldn't remember what I was going to say, but that's okay. Because <laughs> I'll figure it out. And uh, but anyway, Ms. Johnson, can we have a roll call vote, please. Yes, sir. Mr. Robson. Yes. Ms. Tillett. Mr. Crail? Yes. Ms. Hope? Yes. Mr. Tucker? Based on what I've heard from Mayor Jerome and Councilman Crail, yes. Mayor Jerome? Yes. Hey, thank you all. And uh, we'll, get this, uh, we'll get this thing moving on that. Okay. And we're over to the city manager. <laughs> thank you, Mayor, Council members. Um, first of all, uh, the discussion item uh, has budget work session continued. Just as a reminder, August the 15th, 4 p.m., we need to add it to our, our uh, future dates. That it will be when we finish the CIP portion. Uh, please keep in mind anything that we've discussed at the last meeting as well as that meeting will bring back as 15th. Did I say 14th? Thank you. August 15th. I'm coming 4 on the 14th to get a good seat. <laughs> 
<laughs> 4 p.m. on the 15th. I wrote the 15th instead of 14th, I'm sorry. Um, but we will address any items that we may either discuss and maybe not finalize at the August 31st. Um, August 31st will be a work session in which we meet here at 415 to leave at 430. We will go out to the Innovation District. Um, from the Innovation District, we'll come back, uh, begin the session at 530. Our first item will be the ordinances and the direction from um, the Council in reference to developing and presenting you a strategic plan. Then we'll go forward from there. We'll address any budgetary issues and then any other items that may need to be on that particular work session at that point in time. August 31st at 4.15, we leave at 4.30. Meeting here. At here, yes, sir. Um, we'll be in the Bearcat. Yes, sir. <laughs> 4 o'clock on Tuesday. We will take a break about 5, hopefully 5.30, maybe 5.45, and then reconvene for your regular meeting at 6 o'clock. And public really invited to go out there and look also, but you better have a four-wheel drive truck, not a car. Um, and then as far as the report, am I good? Okay. Um, I'd just like to cover a few of the items that we've discussed recently. The ISBA, if you recall, um, we um, adopted at the last meeting a, um, a, a policy saying or a resolution stating that we would go to the next step, which was with the county. Um, I have a couple dates, so I wanted to bring those to the council. Let me know what you believe. Um, it will work for you. And then the other, the other items I will need approval. Um, and I would prefer in a vote, if it's okay with the council, um, as to whether or not you would waive the time limit in this matter, which is a 90 day, or excuse me, 50 day statutory limit, if we have to exceed that. So just so that we can present that to the county and they're not waiting on us for anything. The two dates that were provided to us by the county uh, for an evening meeting are September 20th and October 2nd. So I'm wondering what county, uh, the council's, um, October 2nd or September 20th is the first meeting. Um, I, I'm good for either date and I've already given that information to Ms. Hayes. So. I'm good for the 20th. What time? Evening meeting, so I could not tell you what time. I would assume 7-ish. Uh, no, it will be in, in City of Eustis. Okay. I just assume get, get this over and, you know, move on. Let's, the clock is a ticking. So I will send an email to the county managers once I know uh, Councilmember Host is checking her account. Okay. Oh, very good. Okay. okay. Councilmember checking. Okay. So I will send an email to uh, Jeff Cole to let him know both dates work. I'll send him an email to let him know. Um, but I would like to take a quick moment, if you don't mind. Um, the uh, Eustis City Manager read into action on July 20th. So I'd just like to read the minutes, if that's okay, real quick. Um, <clears throat> in reference to the ISBA negotiating process, Mr. Niebuhr reported on the discussion at the county commission meeting where the county unanimously voted to not approve the city's compromise proposal, which provided delay in annexing the three subdivisions. He added he thought there was some support for approving the ISBA without the three developments. He stated the county commission wanted to move forward <coughs> with the joint public meeting with all three governing bodies. He asked direction from the commission regarding moving to the public joint public <coughs> meeting. The commission questioned what the benefit would be to the city in moving forward with Mr. Niebuhr explained that Mount Dora has to first approve moving to the joint meeting. If they do not, then he stated he would request another manager's negotiating meeting. He further explained his belief that if the two cities reach an agreement, then the county would approve the agreement. He stated the joint public meeting would allow the three governing bodies to openly discuss any proposal for compromise. He further explained that there are th other properties in the area, in that area, excuse me, that have been, that have developers that are, a lot of that, so I apologize, uh, developers that are waiting to annex that already have projects they want to develop within the city. Was he at the same meeting we were at? I, 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 I agree. I think so. He stated his belief that a proposal in the county that excludes those three subdivisions but includes the balance of the properties would appease the majority concern about the city annexing those subdivisions. The commission commented on the negative impact on the city if it is unable to grow. 
they questioned if the joint meeting would be open to the public with Mr. Niebuhr explaining, explaining that it would be a public meeting, but that they would not be required to take public comment. Mr. Niebert then explained that the city proposal would not include those three subdivisions, so those residents would not be as interested in the proceedings. He stated everyone else would then have the ability to voluntarily annex. He indicated at Mount Dora's workshop, they voted to maintain their position and not give Eustace any property. He noted they don't have to have acquisitions, yes, acquisitions from Mount Dora to get the ISBA approved by the that county, by the county, just a lot other that's in there. Okay. He noted they don't have to have acquiescence. I can't, I'm having a hard problem today. From Mount Dora, it's not how it's spelled, but yes. No, he's got, he's got three S's or they have three S's and a C and an E, so I'm not sure. And then I've got three that's from Mount Dora to get that the ISBA approved by that the county. So, but that's, that's what I have on minutes. He stated that at that time, this is, that there is no agreement with Mount Dora, that Mount Dora, but Mount Dora. He further explained that a joint meeting, that there were additional issues that should be discussed. The commission thanked the city manager, staff, and the marketing firm for their efforts at the commission meeting. They commented um, on the need for the county's or community support and thanked the residents who participated. The commission <coughs> cited the benefits to the to to that the but to the city <laughs> to be able to work with other developers and annexing into the city and the overall benefits to the community as a well being able to lower the millage rate and other advantages. So as a well being able I, I, <laughs> I'm glad to see it says draft on them because so I, as best I can make out those are the minutes from the city of Houston. I'm certainly so glad we have Miss Johns as our clerk. Yeah. <laughs> well, he is correct that there is no agreement is from Mount Dora. That's that correct. part I understood, understood, and that is true. Unanimously. So if okay. so council is available for the 20th of September, October 2nd, and as a whole, each of you are okay with us extending the 50-day statutory limit if we have to extend it beyond that time frame. So, so question, question on that. I, I'll, I just don't have a problem with that either. I just want to make sure our legal counsel, is there any, is there any negative that we waive by waiving that time period? Is there anything negative that uh, we're missing or losing that you can think of? Or putting ourselves in a box, yeah. or, you know? I can't think of any, but... It hasn't been a concern of mine. Um, right. I, I think it's, um, at this point, the, the prudent method to go with. Um, should that be what you all decide to do? Um, you know, it's been an ongoing thing, obviously, and um, it's a good, you know, good possible way to go forward. It's up to you. I don't, I'm not having any concerns with it. Okay. And, and then we Fine. did not originally, to Councilman Rolfson, um, if you recall when we began this, we had expend, extend the date several sure. times. Um, and um, at that point in time, I believe all legal from all the different parties have, have stated, as long as all of us agree, Extending it, I only want to make sure that if if there is lethargy by other parties and uh, the old legal term is latches, they just sit there and we have to drag them back. That we can drag them back if we need to. That was going to be my question: is is are we able to um, put a limit on how far we're willing? I mean, you know, it's one thing to have 50 days, and then if it goes another 50 days for. We'll have to At continue to agree. We, we have to, yeah, we'll have to continue to agree, so they'll have to bring that back. Okay. And that was what we did back in March, if you recall, and then again in yeah. May, is we agreed yeah. to extend the time period. And this 
50 day time period over? The county met on July 11th. So they extended it to the two counties at that, or two cities at that point in time. We just have submitted our resolution this last meeting on the 18th, if I'm not mistaken, or the 26th. 26th, we opened the special meeting. So really it'll be as of, we're the last party to submit the um, agreement. So it'll begin as of July 26th. Yeah, okay, I'm fine. So. Um, yeah, the, the only reservation I have is, is if this is a public meeting, and this is really important, I don't like particularly like the idea of no public input. I mean, um, I, the county's called it. But, but I mean, if so can we express that to the county if we all agree, or are we going to just have well, this be a... I think it's something they need to play uh, by themselves. The last time they had a public meeting, or that was, their, their public input was not, <coughs> wasn't deemed necessary, they didn't want public input, the, um, uh, the city manager opened up for public input, and he was, I don't think, very happy with that decision. Let's put it that way. Actually, no, the, the chairman. the city manager. Uh, the, oh, Ron Niebuhr, yes, yeah. he did so open he up as well. Open up the public, yeah. and, uh, and I think he regretted that decision to do that. was that. the one in Eustace. So yes, that was the one in Eustace at that time. So it is their call, and um, and, and you're looking at um, um, lots and lots and lots of people. It's the county's call, not, yes. right. not Eustace's call. That's correct. The county is okay. the chair. Of this is the county's ball game. Yeah. And they, they might, they might, but it's uh, going to be their call on that. And we're just there as active participants, right? Yes, and, and we, I will have... Um, Prior to the uh, September 20th, have you meet with city attorney? Um, I'm assuming um, Mr. Colbert will be me. Okay, so that you will meet so that you understand the parameters in which we work within in that type of meeting because this is an unusual type of situation. So I'll schedule those meetings with you right before that. Great. So, so our motion is to uh, have a meeting at um, 7 o'clock at uh, the. I don't know the time exactly. It's game. an evening meeting. An I'm evening assuming meeting 7, but I don't know that. And, uh, and to extend the. The 50 day, the 50 day uh, time frame to a uh, not specified date, just to extend it. Yes, just to. Okay, extend. that's our motion. And I think we have a we have a second. I think we didn't get a second yet for that. Second, second, second. Okay, um, <coughs> we just do a. Yeah, I, I guess I I would like to if, just clarify the motion, um, either September 20th in the evening or as an alternative. October 2nd. Perfect. Okay, that's good. Sounds to me like the Those 20th was good Everybody's with everybody. Go. That right? um, uh, but Except I didn't even look at the second. I was just so we don't have to come back and vote again. Monday. Okay, it should be good. Yeah. I should be good to go on that day also. I'm good to go. Okay, also. Second. <clears throat> Very good, okay. And um, we have a motion a second. Anybody from the public wish to address this issue? Being none, uh, let's have a roll call. Okay. Oh, excuse me, I'm sorry. I'll just say this. Somebody should tell the mayor of Eustis that if he does a better job of planning and executing and operating his own city and perhaps the empty land that he has within his city, that he could perhaps be entrusted to have some additional property. But until he does that, he doesn't, you know, it's kind of like you don't give anybody something to continue to muck up what they got. <laughs> okay. Good comment, thank you. <laughs> That'd be nice if that got recorded. I hope that, that called to re I probably got her recording back there. Got it. Okay. Uh, fine. So, Miss um, Johnson, can have a roll call vote, please? Mr. Crail? Yes. Mr. Tucker? Yes. Mr. Rothson? Yes. Ms. Hope? Yes. Ms. Tillett? Yes. Mayor Jerome? Yes. Okay. Um, <coughs> there was a, a board appointment on there. there is, I don't. Uh, uh, do we, let's go and find Just a few more oh, items. I'm, I'm sorry, sorry, Mayor. I'm sorry. I, I thought that was the last one. Um, just to give you a quick update, so we had adopt a spot. Councilmember Host was out there. We've actually have some nice bricks on, at the cemetery. I know you're continuing. I haven't been out since Saturday, but I rode by Saturday. I have a team. That'll be I have a team working on it while I'm gone for two weeks. So hopefully, when I get back, I'll see these beautiful flowers all planted the way I would like them to be. Very good. Colorful. And then I believe Colorful. we'll move Thank on. I believe, you. Mr. Tucker, you're after that. Maybe. Okay. Thank you. Um, and, and I would like to just say thank you. We have a lot of downtown merchants who are stepping up and they're watering the plants out front and they're spending time. Um, I know they're letting parks know that they're part of the program. We have the little signage in the window, so it, it's nice to have that support. For the audience, we're talking about the entrance to the cemetery, the two sides. Yes. Thank you, ma'am. Um, 
the Arbors report mentioned earlier, we hope to have that, if not August 15th, at the next first meeting in September. Um, again, August 15th is a fairly large report so, council, so um, it may be that it's better off to push it to September. Um, we have approved the light lease work tonight. We've talked about Limit Street. As you know, I went back to the county. Um, they uh, mentioned that I need to speak with uh, Dottie, who's in their CRA. We spoke. Um, she was looking to see if there would be a conflict if they gave us money from the CRA with our CRA because we're already receiving federal money um, on the side of um, funding our stormwater. So there is a little bit of a conflict right now. The county did not propose any other funds for that. that those were the only funds they came out with. Um, I will reach out to them one more time to see if anything has changed. And then what is the desire of council? Do you wish for me to bring that back at that point in time? If it has not changed, and present to you that resolution of approving the limit. Just putting a note in there that we did nego try to negotiate. There was some movement on trying to um, find some money from the county, but they just were not able to find that. Well, I, I hope I, I hope you will bring it back to council, um, but I'm not convinced that there's not another way for them to come up with some some money. Thank you very much. Um, Fourth Street Docks. Um, obviously, we're still working down at the Fourth Street Docks. I'd like to ask John to step up here, Peters, and actually give you the report from him because I believe he'll give you the technical terms um, in reference to what's still going on there and what we ran into, um, just so that everyone is aware we're still busy. Mr. Thank Peters. Thank you, Ms. Hayes. John Peters, Public Works Director. Um, Let's see, how do I start here? As we got into the 4th Avenue docks, we found out the situation with work um, in several areas. Uh, we previously reported to you all regarding the wood on the outside of the dock, which we are replacing. Um, the problem is when they started taking the docks over to um, uh, Simpson Cove to start working on the concrete, uh, we had a, a couple of the um, uh, boxes, I call them the floating boxes underneath to help it float. They had been uh, broken. They had water in it. The good news is the manufacturer will take care of most of that cost. Uh, we have a new employee who is doing a wonderful job spearheading uh, all that. The bad news is that when we got it up there, we have wood underneath that has rotted that these uh, flotation devices are attached to. Uh, the plans call for pressure treated wood. In fact, it would kiln dry wood. And so consequently, it um, has deteriorated very badly. Uh, just got a, uh, a change order for fixing that at 4.30 this afternoon. Really have not had a chance to review it. I will be getting with me paid uh, probably tomorrow afternoon on that. Uh, but um, we, you know, while we're at it, we need to continue fixing it. Uh, so what we will do is, if you're okay, uh, authorize the city manager to continue with the repairs and we will report back to you. Um, the concern that Ms. Hayes brought up during the budget process was, do we have the same problem as Simpson Cove and Grantham Point? Well, we did some investigation. The good news is the wood under those are pressure treated. Uh, so it doesn't look like we have a problem in that regard. So. The problem is confined to the 4th Avenue dock. Now, we were only replacing the area when, on what I call the T section at the very end. So what we will do is as part of the, uh, the capital improvement process and the budget, we will put additional monies in for the remainder of the dock. Now this is one of those things where the creep on a $50,000 project gets real far out there. What we're gonna do is we'll put out a uh, uh, an RFP for proposal so from various contractors to replace the wood on the balance of the dock. Uh, that way we have a, a bona fide bid for that work. Uh, so we're going to finish what we started and then we'll do an RFP uh, with a capital improvement element uh, for next year. Hopefully around January, February when the boat traffic dies down a little bit and we'll get the rest of the dock fixed. So, so this is more of less of a fix instead of a replace. So, is this what we're talking? We're going to go back and sort of replace the. We're going to replace the, the, the whole thing. 
We're going to replace the, uh, the, the kiln drive wood underneath right. that's rotting out. Right, but I mean, in other words, if I'm assuming the same contractor did it. Basically, it's a replace. Do we have a claim um, contract? Oh, it's out. Mr. Uh, Blair it's out That's right, you mentioned that last I think this was like you gave us an update last meeting as well. Um, John, uh, I understand the original contractor is out of business. Bye bye. Was he not bonded? Pardon? Were they not bonded? Uh, the bond was only for a year. And we'll, we'll be on that point. And the engineer on that, uh, the statute limitation on engineering is four years, and we'll be on that point. Thanks. Okay. Um, one, of, one, one of my questions was answered about the insurance. Uh, do we have our own our own insurance? Are we able to do anything with our own insurance? I know we have deductibles, or but we are totally soft insured on this. We are, we are. We looked into that. We didn't have any options. Okay. So that is the reason why one of your amendments to your CIP is this item for next year. At this point, we have gone through the full process and uh, we have legitimately uh, put out the purchasing items and, and we've followed all the requirements at this point in time. But going forward, we'll have to do a new RFP and clean up the remaining piece of the dock. One thing, I'm oh, sorry, sorry. Uh, John, you're, you're familiar with the term clerk of the works? Mm -hmm. I mean, clerk of the works. Yes. Okay. Do we, are we mandated by the state or in our own purchasing laws to have a clerk of the works on these projects that exceed X amount of dollars as a public works project to start with? To my understanding, like well, now, now, statutorily, I think this falls under home rule because we have our purchasing requirements. And ultimately in the purchasing requirement, uh, city council can waive the purchasing process. Uh, the problem I have here is the work that we're doing really was not part of the original bid. Um, you know, we didn't have, you know, pulling it out and replacing wood underneath. So I, I'm not comfortable standing here before you saying that we had the best price. And given the amount of dollars that we're talking about for the rest of the work, I think is, is fiduciary responsible for, fiduciary responsible for all of it put an RFP out and do it the right way. And, and going forward again, we have the new adopted purchasing manual we, that we brought to you last December, which changed the purchasing in the past. So that, that was major for us because we gave you in that manual processes, requirements on the insurance, um, again, um, different levels of bonding that were required or that were not in your prior purchasing manual. So I believe we put in place going forward the protection for the city um, in the next contracts. Uh, performance bonds are good um, and some of the other things are good but when statute limitations aren't long enough to act on some of these things puts us in a bind okay and um, you know as far as recovering and being able to have a good product um, bottom line that those aren't, aren't those who aren't familiar with clerk of the work so there's some other terms for them it's a person that you hire an independent person that's hired to oversee a project of of scope, you know, okay. somewhere over fifty thousand, hundred thousand dollars, a public works type project. That when they when they get all the materials, they look at the engineering drawings, they look how it's going to be done, they check on when they come in to look at the job, they check on the the weather, things like this. If you have a contract that states you have to complete the job in 180 days, and after that you're going to be, you have to pay a penalty, you know, per diem penalty. Well, a lot of contractors they fight you well today a day off because the the weather was bad well the clerk of the works records all that stuff they look at the material list when the things come in they look at against the at against the, the engineering drawing to make sure that what is coming in on the job is the right stuff it costs there's no doubt about it it's an added cost to your your public works projects but it gives you a level of confidence that your projects have that uh, somebody who's looking at not not saying nothing against John John's a, a professional engineer, he knows what he's doing. But John isn't going to be the, the person that's going to have the time to look at that every day on the job and, oh, to, and, and to be over, and have, to oversee the job all day long like that. It's an independent person. Independent. We're not out there all every day, not every, you know, every minute of the day. 
but it's a, it's a, it's a cost that uh, it's something that we might want to look into as, as far as the city because let me, this is the first time we've seen like we've been kind let of. Me, let me clarify this. for you. Um, on project sessions are 46 utility projects. The design work was done by Thatch. Right. We have Quentin Hampton out there overseeing the construction. So they're out yeah. there every day. Right. They document every day what it was raining, what it wasn't, so there's a claim. So you have that with that kind of a job. And on the dock Good. project, we have a new employee who is excellent, and uh, he's been out there every day documenting everything. Uh, he has been doing an incredible job for it. Should it get done? Well, okay. we also, uh, with Pegas, that Pegas is down at the um, um, boardwalk. We did the same thing. So again, we, we will, with some projects, we may even ask that we bring in a project manager that's hired as a consultant to do those type things as a risk manager in that perspective. No, no so we, we may call them different titles, but we are pursuing okay. that. Yeah, there's different titles for them, and uh, we, we call them clerk of the works. And uh, there, there's a group of people that got the, that was that was their profession, being clerk of the works. And, uh, right. Anyway. Um, I now understand what you were saying. I thought you were saying something different. So I apologize. Okay, I'm sorry. You're construction yeah. manager. Yes, sir. Construction, construction manager. Yeah. Do, but yes. Which you never use your. I, I, I yeah. think that's an investment. Right. It's an interim policy. Yeah. And uh, very you, don't, you don't use your your architect that of record or your architect mm -hmm. who's doing a job as your person oversee the project because they have a, a vested interest in making sure they everything gets done. Mr. Olson, I, that's another level of insurance policy yes. type that's that's wise to consider in large projects. Uh, I'm a little surprised that the bond only was for one year. Um, it seems unusual to me, is, yeah. and uh, um, my experience with bonding is it's a whole lot longer. Mm -hmm. And the insurance companies guarantee it for a, whatever we ask them to. You just pay the premium for the additional, like tail coverage for attorneys, things like that. And so uh, I would urge our legal counsel to keep that in mind, especially when we have projects that might rot like uh, in, in, or if poorly inspected <coughs> might catch us by surprise years later and that we want to make sure those bonds are extended for a lot longer than a year. Well and our RFPs and RFQs need to have that in there so we have a responsibility to okay. have that in the beginning and I think if we do that when the contracts looks at it or attorneys look at it then the contract should have that Good on point. Yeah, we, we follow what's in the Yes, the statutory guidelines are generally two-year minimum, I think, on payment performance bonds. Yeah, and emphasis on minimum, so. Yeah, yeah but it's, it's generally the standard. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, John. Thank you. Um, and then um, the access road behind Lake Cares, several of you have had questions. Um, as John knows, we are beginning some of the work. We've done the prep work. We begin this month. Um, last week of July, we may have began a few of the roads, but we had some rain and some other issues. So you should see some paving going on this month in August. Um, hopefully, Council Member Host, when you come back from your trip, you'll see that it's paved. Now the, so. the seniors won't be tripping on chunks of right. asphalt big chunks. this big. That's correct. Um, I just mentioned that um, several months ago, back in um, end of June, um, you permitted the um, staff to submit to the Florida League of Cities three different awards. One was with the Florida Municipal Achievement Award um, for um, the, let's see, there were three different ones, so I'm just trying to find the titles on here. We submitted, um, unfortunately, we were not awarded, but we did receive a thank you, and we received the acknowledgement that we turned the, the awards in, so um, I believe one was for the Patreons, um, yes, um, and yes, Patriot Cruz, and then the last one, there was three. I wish they would have put those in here, but again, we're, we're very appreciative that um, um, that we were able to put the submit those um, requests for consideration anyway. It's another reason you for a rule. We, 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 we could grant the award. <laughs> yes, that's correct. Um, and then the last item um, I will mention, um, I'd like for um, Mr. McKinney to come up. Um, I had the good pleasure to introduce to the City Council John McKinney. Um, John will be joining staff here at the City on um, August the 14th. Mike, come on up just for a moment, too. Sorry. <laughs> um, he'll be join, joining the uh, finance division. He will be our finance director. Um, he comes from the city of Edgewater as the assistant city manager and finance director there um, since February of 2008. Um, he also was the controller of the city of Titusville. He worked for Brevard County and the city of Lake Mary. 
Altogether, he has 23 years of governmental accounting experience. John earned his Bachelor of Science degree in Business Administration with an emphasis in accounting from UCF. Uh, a Master's of Business Administration with an emphasis in finance from Stetson University, and he become a, became a Certified Government Finance Officer, or CGFO, in 2007, and a Certified Redevelopment Professional, FRA, RP, in 2014. John has been very active with the FCCMA, the FRA, the GFOA, the FGFOA, and the Volusia, Flagler, and Space Coast FGFOA local chapters. Um, John is a GFOA special reviewer for the CAFR certificate, which Mike understands that process, and, and has served with the FGFOA Technical Resources Committee, Certification Committee, and Small Government Committee. Um, he served as the chair on both the CGFOA, CGFO Committee and the Small Government Committee. In 2014 and 17, he was elected to three year terms as an FGFOA board member. And on a local level, level, he served as the Secretary and the Treasurer of the Space Coast and as a founding member of the Volusia County FGFOA chapter, where he served as president. John and his wife, Kim, um, have been married 21 years, have two children, Nathan and Nicholas, and he serves the community by being active in the Boy Scouts and as a director of the Edgewater Expo. So um, I just wanted to introduce John to the city. Um, Mr. Shepard um, will, will still be part of reside in the finance division. Um, he will roll into the deputy finance director, um, and you'll see him in the future during other events, whether it's the CAP or whatever it might be. Um, and um, we appreciate both of both of them for what they will bring to the city. Thank you, John. That is it, Premier Mayor. Thank you. Okay. Good. Okay. Um, okay. There was a okay. There was a board uh, report on there, but. Uh, I have, um, and hopefully by the August 15th, I will have an appointment for the um, uh, Public Arts Commission. Okay, great. Thank you. And uh, that'll be good. And uh, that's it on that. And it, there was no other board appointments, correct? I know. Okay, no okay, great. Okay. Uh, City Attorney's Report. Ms. Confra? Um, I just misspoke. It's one year minimum. Yeah. One year minimum standard statutory requirement on those uh, bonds. As a minimum? Yes. Yeah, okay. One year. Um, and generally, that's you know what they're willing to provide otherwise you know costs go up oh yes definitely. So, just something to think about um i did just attend the florida municipal attorneys association in st pete at the end of last week and this past weekend um, we also received a rallying cry for home rule um, <laughs> from uh, uh, the speaker from coral gables uh, the city attorney craig lean um, so all the cities are being encouraged to do this type of thing um, to support home rule, pass resolutions, even lawsuits in support of home rule. We talked about medical marijuana, a lot of preemption, preemptions, and how the city, the same top, hot topics that we're dealing with, Airbnb regulations, <coughs> medical marijuana, and um, sign codes, some of those things. Hey, um, real quick, and um, uh, since you were on board, the, a while back I gave um, part of my charter duties is to report to the council any claims against the city which I designated our city attorney to uh, give that report when necessary so I don't know if you're aware of that um, and uh, you know since Mr. Bruce not here and um, okay but the city attorney is I designated a city attorney which is your law firm right. to, um, you know, to provide any um, updates on claims against the city that's part of uh, my my charter responsibilities, which I does, which I'm allowed to designate, and I designated it to the city attorney's office to do that. And you report to uh, and you know that, right? Yeah. And then you report it to the. And town. then, well, they can report it to the. And I would just, I would just expect to be at the city attorney's report to make those. If there's any claims against the city, to bring those claims out publicly at that point. Okay, I don't do report those to the city attorney every month. So since that request, um, so the off the um, centrum has sent that report. So we've been continuing to do that. We talk about claims. I'm not. We haven't had anything. Yeah, I'm not referring like the workers' comp claims, things, those kind of claims. I'm referring to basically lawsuits. Uh, somebody files a claim. You know, they trip a trip and fall, something like that. You know, that's against the city. Right. Nothing. Okay, that's good. But yeah, I wouldn't be. Um, I was. I'm not looking. When I say claims, and I know a lot of times some of our biggest claims are workers' comp type claims. And I'm not looking at those. I don't think the council's looking at those. That's an internal process. So we're looking at major claims against the city, lawsuit type claims, where somebody files a papers against us. Okay. No, I have a question. Um, I'm 
haven't been served with anything. The only thing I'm aware of is the open foreclosure, the new one, and the old one. Okay, fine. Yeah. yeah. Okay, great. <laughs> anything else? Nothing. Thank no. you very much. Okay, um, Mr. Slaby's not here, so we'll go to Mr. Crail. Well, um, welcome, John. Um, it's good that you meet the requirement of every director from now on being named John. So <laughs> soon Roy's about to change his name. And, and, uh, so Middle name's John, by the way. <laughs> oh, okay. Well, there you go. Then, then you're good. Um, so welcome. And, and, and I um, just want to express my appreciation to um, Mike Shepard, too, because um, as we go through this budget process, and I know there's many people um, involved, but the, the data, the importance of the accuracy, the hours and hours and hours that go into um, uh, good preparation and, and, and so on, um, and, and great work um, is really appreciated. So thank I'll you. Pass that on to the others. Thank you. <laughs> Keep a little for yourself. Not money, appreciation. <laughs> That's it, thanks. Ms. Oaks. Um, ditto on that, and the same thing with um, what Mr. Um, <coughs> Masterson mm -hmm. said earlier for the chief and, and handling that very difficult situation as we navigate it through it. Um, so thank you very much for that. Um, I, I attended the Tourism Development Council. I sit on that for the Lake County League of Cities yesterday. And um, I want to say that they're doing extremely well. They're looking very strong this year fiscally, and they think they're going to hit a $3 million revenue mark. But I think the thing that I took away that was very interesting is that the Tourism Council is diversifying quite a bit in the types of sports they're bringing in, and they are doing a good job in bringing in niche markets. So, of course, we were mentioned because of the disc golf, and our bicycle festival is mentioned. Um, but they have a number of things coming up, both for the remaining part of this year and next year that have to do with the volleyball, bass tournaments, um, <coughs> a kayaking, and golf. Um, so that was very good. They've undertaken a new media campaign and um, are working with um, a company there. And then the other thing that's happening actually at the county level is um, they're looking at the reorg of the TDC and the EDC, and they're working on that and they're making progress there. So that was um, a very good meeting yesterday. And Mr. Gunnerson from Lakeside Inn also sits on that committee. So Mount Dora's got two representatives. Um, the other thing, and I know, Cal, you'll talk about it, but we did the backpack program this weekend um, and um, served 450-some hot dogs and hamburgers and uh, lots of backpacks. The police department was out there, and I'll stop there and let you take it if you're next, because I think you are, and you can talk about the rest of it. He is. Mr. Olson. Uh, thank you. Uh, before I go into that, um, uh, John, welcome. Uh, I, I know you'll do well and serve our constituents uh, well. Uh, Mike, thanks for all you've done and taught me, Mike Shepard. I uh, continue to harass you anytime I can to get up and learn. <laughs> um, I said last time, I think I spoke my piece very well about, was it called Project X, that debacle that was there, and uh, Chief, Chief O'Grady and, and, and uh, your Deputy Chief and all the people that participated, exceptionally well done. Um, and uh, the backpack. Oh, and by the way, I want to half the public is gone, but I want to thank those that take the time regularly to show up uh, and keep us honest with your questions and your comments and your criticism and your thanks and praise once in a while. Uh, it really demonstrates the value of home rule to me. So keep coming and thank you very much. I intend to use this example when I say things publicly at Florida League of Cities. How, how valuable home rule is because of you. Back, our backpack program, I was sandwiched in between the popcorn machine and the snow cone machine. So I had to do double duty. <coughs> and uh, uh, there was a no, new name they were giving me, which I frankly had forgotten, like uh, production engineer, that's what it was. So uh, it's a new name I want to add to my <laughs> Um, uh, I, I hope you come. It'll, it'll, it's a fun time to see the, the smiles on those faces. Others here were participating. Jim, I see a, a number of others. 
were Pitt Renee and, and others that participated. Uh, so uh, it is really fun. And if you don't go and, and show up, I think you're going to be missing a lot of fun, heartwarming things. To see kids get bikes and carry on backpacks filled with pencils and paper and School. for schools and glue and color crayons. And it's really a good time. I know you were their mayor. And so uh, I, it's a fun thing for me. I'd pay money to be able to do it again rather than volunteer. So. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no problem. Okay. So uh, thank you very much for those that helped. And, uh, and uh, that's it. Thank you. And Mr. Tucker. Yeah, very briefly, uh, Uzel's here. Uh, we did a lot of talking about Juneteenth before the event, but since the event, we've said anything. Uh, a lot of work went into that. A little disappointing on the turnout, but having said that, a lot of work went into it. Those that did come, I think, had a good time. I was up there from 8 o'clock in the morning to 7 o'clock at night, except for a one hour nap I took. Uh, But I know a lot of work went into it. And a lot of the volunteers, <coughs> excuse me, uh, I know Pat Burke was there with hoops. And uh, a lot of volunteers were there. And Ozell, to you and your staff, your committee to put that together. Thank you. Well done. Yeah. Good job. I look at it as a sheet down cruise for a really bigger than that. <laughs> Ozell Ward 318 Jackson Street, Mount Dora. Uh, thanks for mentioning that. We do have a report that will be coming to the council when we get all the final budget and stuff in. And uh, your remark about the attendance, it seemed low, but I found out a lot of people were at their homes listening. And But there's been a lot of conversation since then. So the community and the neighborhood was very much aware and plugged in to what was going on. And it's, it's all been very positive as a first step and an indication that things are going to start happening in the district. So uh, I want to, I'd be remiss if I didn't thank the city department, Parks and Rec, the police department, also uh, visit Mount Dora had a tremendous uh, part in this and they did it all gratis. Wow. And without them, we were just kind of trying to invent a wheel. Uh, but they had templates and knew how to do things, very instrumental in the talent and the contracts and all of those things that I certainly didn't know about. So the effort goes to everybody that stepped up and participated, and we appreciate that, and the support of the council and the CRA. Thank you. Thank you, Rizal. Well, um, I think um, Norm Renee also deserves a attaboy for the Juneteenth. He, he sat under that tent with, with kids painting all day long. And I know he was hot because I, I asked him, I said, did you just get out of the shower? His head was, he was soaked. But it was a hot, hot day, um, but it was still fun. I, I really enjoyed myself. Um, I'm gonna echo everybody's comments so far on all the um, the, the attaboys and um, at the because it's 8:20 and I don't have anything new to say that's different from anyone else. I'm gonna keep it short. So that's it for me. I'm gonna give the city manager another comment here. Only that we do have the sound system in next year's budget. So I just will remind you that it's a CIP item that you get to consider. So please consider it. I, move it <laughs> I think we should spend this year's funds and do it now. <laughs> it's it's one time. Yes, one time shot, right? Okay, thank you. Um, so the uh, we we were talking tonight about the MPO and uh, MPO has been um, um, like I said, just came from a meeting today and it was a workshop and um, Mount Thor is very predominant with the talking today and a lot of things that were being addressed throughout the county and Mount Dora is involved in quite a few things with the county right now. And uh, um, like I was told today, uh, we have, uh, there, there's money, there's funding. Uh, from what I'm gathering, the word was funds are available to Mount Dora for the Highland Street project. 
Now there's coordination that we still need to do because we're talking with the county as far as taking the taking over fifth, going down the highway, things like that, all the way out to the county. So there's things there that need to be done. Um, we talked a little bit about the, the reorganization thing. Um, the trail cost, okay, there's, there's always been talk before, and I think this council's heard about it, where um, the county and the city of Mount Dora need to share a $2 million cost to take over the, um, the CFX, um, the rails themselves, okay? It's really critical, and I know Ms. Hayes is in, um, is in conversations with the county as to how this thing needs to be funded. It's very critical that this thing gets funded as quick as possible. A funding, a funding mechanism gets put in place to do this uh, because this then is going to allow the Florida Department of Transportation to take the lead to do a lot of this background paperwork, the legalities, and a lot of things to move this project forward, which then they can get involved in. They can't get involved unless there's a funding mechanism in place. And I know we've been talking about it for a few years, but the, um, I think the point's coming that we're going to have to do that um, very quickly. When I say quickly, probably like within, I would say around roughly six months, would you think, if even that long? We and, were, uh, we were able to put it in the 18-19 budget because at this point in time they haven't defined when they would expect payment, so we put it out in 18-19 in your right. CIP. But as always, we can move that up. Right. Um, at this point in time, it's just listed as debt, so it's something that we will make a determination when we, when we get to that point. Okay, um, yeah, uh, do you have a question? Mr. When you're Mayor, Mr. Mayor. That's okay. And I'm gonna do, I'm gonna close out, so if you have a question for this item, go ahead. No, I I stopped talking too soon. I wanted to congratulate our city manager and our new grandchild. Oh, yeah, here we go. Oh, yeah. Evelyn Marie. <laughs> okay, uh, another, another item that was brought up today that we have, um, a really big stake in is the uh, roundabout that's going to be going in over on the 19 and uh, which we're talking about it today there the public works the county public works director was talking about it and and this is another opportunity where the city's involved very heavily with the landscape and how this thing is going to look and the, and the talk today was centered around the fact that this is great for Eustis it's great for Tavares and it's great for Mount Dora it's, you know, it's, it's a gateway monument. So we're gonna have to, and so today's talk was centered around something very unique has to be designed by all three cities along with the counties, a uh, kick in for everything also, to really do something spectacular on that roundabout that's really going to highlight all three cities and be in this center post of this, of our golden triangle that we have with all the cities. Um, that's, that's about it, that's all I have, except for all the congratulations for everybody, and um, I'm glad that somebody replied and wanted to come to work for you because I know what a taskmaster you are, <laughs> and I know it's tough getting somebody to come to work here, but uh, John, thanks for applying for it, and one of these days you're going to meet the real John McKinney, okay? He'll be around someday. <laughs> okay, but anyway, real quick. The backpack. Uh, I believe the police department pretty much took the lead on that. I know Ivy Severance should get kudos from everybody for gathering up a million volunteers. She does a remarkable job getting the bicycles, the backpacks, and whatever, and gathering all of us to do what well, she needs uh, done. Thank, thank you for that. And uh, Ivy is amazing. just amazing, amazing, amazing uh, officer, and, uh, and she's really great for this community, and she does her job. Um, and, and those who don't know that uh, our police officers, uh, including the chief, maybe not so much the chief, no, but uh, no. wear a lot of hats. <laughs> wear a lot of hats in the city. And he delegates really good. And, uh, but uh, no, they, they do, they wear a lot of hats and they're asked to do a lot. And it's not just their job of going into a patrol car and, um, and doing their job in a patrol car, it's a lot more. And, uh, and a lot of people don't realize the term that we use in the city, community <clears throat> policing and which is a whole different level. And, uh, and I was asked by somebody from a, a town from New Jersey where I came from and uh, talked about how different their, the police department is and uh, compared to Mount Dora. And I says, I says, the city where I used to live is not a community police department. They just, they're uh, strictly, I think the word is reactive. They just react to crimes, react to this, react to that, and they, and they do their budgets and they do their policing accordingly. 
Uh, some people know that maybe that the difference between the two. Ours, our police officers are involved in every aspect of this community and um, this is what the people want and this is what the, the city council gives them. So uh, with that, I'm going to ask for adjournment. Well, I have one thing to say. No. Yes, no, I just want to say that I think that, that Ivy Severinsen puts the unity in the term community policing. She's, uh, she's a wonderful person and we are really lucky to have her. I move we adjourn. And, and remember, before we come back together, school starts, so kids will be out there in right. the community so, here. They start on the 10th. Watch that intersection at Clayton and, and 5th. Okay. okay, we're adjourned. Yeah. 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 Yeah.